Oh no, where'd my window go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see. Make sure I got everything going. Uh, all right. Looks like I'm one. All right. Okay. So, hello. Merry Christmas. Uh, let's see. Oh, you got Ditsy Little G in chat. Hey. So, I wanted to, I just kind of wanted to do like a, a, a Christmas stream, just check in with everybody, make sure, you know, um, I know a lot of us already got our celebrations and stuff out of the way, so I figure, you know, if anybody's up for chat, you know, go ahead and start one up. Um, yeah, and I really wanted to, I had a few questions. Oh, and Amanda Cage, Rebel Cage Rattlers here, Castello West. Happy Festivus. <laughs> Aw. So, uh, yeah. Uh, whatever y'all want to talk about, I wanted to just say a few very quick things about the Jink Uger, Dave Kohler um, stepping down from the Justice Democrats, which I think is, it makes sense, but it doesn't. Like, um, I think that they had a conflict of interest to say the least, uh, I don't think they sh well, at least Jank, uh, considering that he does the news and then he does all this other stuff, which it, it's a very blurred line, right? I mean, I do news, I do politics, but I also advocate for certain candidates because, you know, they're in my area or I feel very strongly that, you know, they would help people. So I understand how it can get a little bit blurred, but when you're getting, I'm not getting money, you know, like I'm not getting paid. So if I was getting paid for those, then it would be time for me to step down. But since I don't, you know, receive money from anybody, you know, uh, there's no money exchange. I, I don't see the problem. I try to follow um, Debbie, you know, the same progressives, um, you know, you know what she did during the 2016 election, which, you know, back then, you know, she was pro Bernie and, but she managed to, to strike a balance. It wasn't, you know, oh, you got to vote for this guy. So it's like, that's kind of the way that I wanted to do this. And now, you know, she's not even uh, a fan of Bernie Sanders. So, um, yeah, I I'm trying to follow her lead on, on this stuff. But, um, yeah, I can understand where the line gets blurred. But, you know, once the money starts exchanging hands and you're raising money for a candidate and then you're doing news, then, it, you know, he shouldn't have been doing it. Now, should he have uh, stepped down? Um, Hold on, I've got a horrible cough. Now, do I think he should have stepped down based on just the what was said? No. Uh, the thing is, it came up, they're digging through his comments. They're looking, they're obviously, whoever did this was looking for something, right? Now, they had to go 18 years back. They're not picking anything new. This is this is from like 20 years ago that they're going and they're finding this stuff to bring up and, and prove like, oh, see, you know, he's a pig. He said all these sexist things. Well, to be honest, you know, when I started watching TYT, which is back during the, uh, you know, the primaries, um, he said a lot of stuff back then that was like, whoa, dude, like you realize you're on a progressive news channel. You can't say this stuff, you know objectifying sexualizing women i mean he'd say some just dumbass comments okay like he just said some really dumb stuff so my question is why is it that they're going 20 years in the past to find jank saying stupid stuff which kind of <coughs> as bad as it is you know which isn't that bad um he, they could they could have found something way sooner that was that that would have had the same effect so it's like why are you digging around 20 years ago it, it doesn't make any sense there's a lot of questions I'd like to know who funded this because there was obviously somebody this isn't something they just came across in the news okay they had to go digging for this stuff god dang cough hold on So, okay, I think I'm good now. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I, I just had this horrible cough. 
Yeah, Joseph uh, Sakata said, you know, Jinx still says a lot of that stuff. He does. And and the thing is, it's like, as much as he's a sellout, I don't think he's malicious in it. You know, I, I just think that he's dumb. I really do. I really think that this guy is genuinely dumb. So I don't, I don't think he's being mean about it, but, you know, he just says some dumb stuff. So why is it that they're digging around 20 years ago? Now, the other thing, and I, I, I'm going to need y'all's feedback on this because uh, I want to know how the sound is. I don't know. I am not tech savvy, okay? I don't know how to do share audio through the computer, so I'm going to try to play this video. And Because the other person, uh, well, it was Jank, then there was um, Dave Kohler, and then there was Kyle Kalinske that stepped down. Now, here's what I want to show you from Dave Kohler. All right, this dude... He's a piece of shit, man. He is so myopic in his thinking. Now, this is when I knew Day Day David Kohler was full of crap. Let me see if I can. Oh God, there's just so many windows. I don't know how to do this. All right, so let me see if I can figure this out. Share screen. There we go. Oh, let me pick that. Okay. All right, let's see if I got my screen up. All right, so I'm going to play this for you. Hopefully, it's, the sound is okay. I want to start with a quick message to the people of West Virginia and New Jersey. Stop voting for Republican presidents and governors or stop complaining that you can't drink your water or cross your bridges. You vote for these thugs who don't have the interest of the public in mind, and you're going to get problems. Vote for your own person. Now, now, dude, look at this. Look at this glazed over just fucking... I've drunk the Kool-Aid. I feel so good about myself. I can look down on these poor white people and just feel so damn good that I voted for the right people. You know, I didn't vote for stupid people, even though I guarantee you he voted for Hillary Clinton, which would have fucked him over. And then I would have looked at him and said, well, maybe you shouldn't vote for neoliberals, okay? You get what you deserve, Dave. Ugh. Personal interests, not in favor of someone else's. But what I really want to talk about is Thailand. You drink your water or cross your bridges. No, no, no. I'm going to replay this. I'm going to replay this. Hold on. I want to start with a quick message to the people of West Virginia and New Jersey. Stop voting for Republican presidents and governors or stop. First of all, asshole, we don't vote for Republican uh, governors. All right. We haven't had a Republican governor ever. Okay. So do your fucking research before you talk shit. All right, that for point number one. Point number two is, okay, so if you vote for people that, um, you know, uh, it just shows how limited he doesn't understand, he doesn't care to understand the reasoning why people vote against their best interests. When I see somebody that votes for somebody that is obviously not good for them, it makes me stop and say, how the hell did that person vote for that person. So then I started doing research. I start talking to people. I don't get up on my high horse with my stupid face and start talking crap about things that I don't know. You get what I'm saying? Like maybe just like, like look into it just a tad bit, just a little bit before you start running your mouth on stuff. Now, even though this, and this statement, let me tell you, this statement was made January 13th, 2014. This was the day I, um, it might have been the very day that our uh, we had the water crisis here, which is when a chemical was, was leaked into our water, uh, and uh, it was MCHM, and we had 300,000 people without water for about two weeks. Even though they said it was safe to drink, I know it wasn't. And even if it's not MCHM, they're still leaking poisonous chemicals into our water. So it's not going to go, it, it hasn't gone away. They just switch different chemicals, and we have these chemical leaks all the time. I mean, we've had several, you know, MCHM leaks since then, but nobody's reported on it. So, you know, and people still drink the water because nobody knows about it. Nobody knows how awful it is. So, I mean, some people do because, you know, their water comes out orange or flammable when it comes out of the sink. But, you know, for the most part, if it's clear, people are like, oh, well, okay, I guess it's safe to drink. It might smell like licorice, and it, it you know, looks a little weird, but whatever. Um. Yeah, let me let me figure out how to get out this share screen. Oh no, coffin fit coming on.
I just realized my sound was off. Like I said, I'm not tech savvy. Thank you for pointing point that out to me. Um, um, hmm. Let's see who else here. Oh, well, isn't that interesting? James Manitalk is here. Eric's here. Fly. We got Rebel Cage Rattler. Ditsy Little G. Dax Jacobson. Jeremy Walker. Michael Gaspar. Christian. Fly. I think I already said Fly. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> All right. Oh, God, I was ripping into Dave. I guess it was good I, I was muted because I was just tearing him a new one. But here's the thing. Dave wants to pretend like we're just some, uh, you know, political anomaly that, you know, there are certain states that vote against their best interest and some states don't. I mean, he lives in California and Californians don't vote for stupid people, right? Like they're just this, they've rid themselves of, of all these problems. They have universal health care and they have... Um, you know, they've solved their homeless problem and their housing prices aren't through the roof. They don't have politicians there. They're screwing them over because they always vote in their best interest, right? Mm hmm Yeah. So here's the thing. It's like, it's the same thing like, like you see with racists, right? Like for some stupid reason, you know, that they feel like instead of doing something about a problem, they can feel better by looking down on somebody else. And that's exactly what Dave did with that one. And, and that just kind of really illuminated for me, like, exactly how TYT thinks. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, as far as what I wouldn't hold him accountable for stuff he said 20 years ago, because I know we've all said stuff that was stupid, but Dave is still saying stupid stuff to this day. Cenk is still saying stupid stuff to this day. And I... I'm not bothered that they stepped down. I thought they should have stepped down a long time ago, but it's good that they have. Um, I just, I'm worried about the repercussions as far as like the candidates go. Cause y'all know how much I love Paula Jean and I don't want to see her and, and other candidates like her get hurt because you know, the people that were running the, you know, the program or whatever were stupid. So that's where I'm at on that. And let's see. Yeah, Kevin said, I was at my aunt's house last night, and she and my cousin have the mindset that they don't want to pay for other people's health care. And they're intelligent individuals, but they don't pay attention to this. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like you see so many smart people out there that get fooled into thinking really dumb things, you know? And it's sad to see because, you know, I mean, it's like you could be using your intelligence for like so much more than what you're limiting yourself. You're hurting yourself by, by thinking so small, but like, you know, you have to think small sometimes, you know, I'm one of those people. I think, I think big, I have big ideas, but when it comes to the little stuff, when it comes to like the day to day stuff, I'm garbage at it, you know? So you do have to have a balance between the little stuff and the big stuff, but you know, some of these people, they don't think about the big stuff at all. And I understand why a lot of times, because it's, you know, it's all about survival. But, um, yeah, Kevin says, just for the record, that's the other Kevin. Yeah, we got, we got a couple of Kevins now. Okay, uh, let's see. Rebel Cage Rattler said, Thank you, Stevie, for introducing me to Paula Jean. I'm following her, and I absolutely dig her a lot. We need more of her type. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like she's so – she's a lot like 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 we are. You know, like us, the people that do the shows, people that are in chat. It's like we see something broken with the system. We're, we're, we're average people, but we see something broken, and we want to do something to fix it. And – I, I seriously admire her for that because around here it's dangerous to hope. It's dangerous to get your hopes up for something just to be disappointed, you know, over and over and over again. And by the time you reach the age of like eight years old, you already know 
don't get excited about stuff. Don't get your hopes up because, you know, you're just going to get them dashed. Don't try. Set your sights low. Just stay in the shadows. Don't get noticed because if, if you shine, if you get noticed, you know, you're just, you're going to set yourself up for destruction. So for her to pursue this is huge and it, it takes a lot of character and I, I seriously admire her for running because, um, and it's dangerous. It is dangerous here. Uh, Richard Ojeda, he's um, part of the House of Representatives of Logan County, I believe. And he got beat up and run over by a car when he was running for office. And he fights for, you know, uh, Medicare for All, and he fights for medical marijuana. There's a reason why his why he got run over. You know, uh, they didn't like his message. They didn't want his message out there. And he even gave a shout out to Paula Jean, which I thought was cool. Nobody else wants to even acknowledge that she's running. So, anyway. So, how does y'all Christmas go? Like, you know, I had a pretty good Christmas. Lots of food. You know, and that's always a good day for me when there's food. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I want to I know how, how your Christmas went. Mm-hmm. Dax Jacobson said, if American universal health care excluded black people, I guess it would have passed in 15 minutes. If it would have excluded anybody, if they would have just picked a group and just said, like, let's just dump on them, you know, yeah, it would have been passed. If they, if they could have exploited somebody, let me put it that way, if they could have exploited somebody with universal health care, it would have already been passed. But the thing is, it helps people, so can't have that. Can't have any of that here. Is Jake? Jake Smith is here. That is awesome. Hey, Jake. I haven't talked to you in forever. Hope you're doing good. Joseph Cicada said, <clears throat> I think Paula Jean will be fine. She's a really strong candidate who is honestly too good for Justice Democrats. Amen to that. The other Justice Democrats aren't as solid as her. They might not be okay after this. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like she has a reason. She has a purpose. Before she started running for office, she was actually fighting. I know, Jake said, Stevie, you can call me Joe. I know, I know. I'm so used to calling you Jake. I try to call you Joe, but I always, I'm just so used to calling you Jake. So, um, yeah, but so she was already into this. Like, she, you know, Paula Jean was already, she saw something broken and was trying to fix it. And then they started up the Justice Democrats and she said, you know what? These people aren't listening to me. Maybe I'll do it myself. So that's why she started running. And and so, you know, it wasn't like, oh, this is my chance to get rich or this is my chance to be famous. She said, this is my chance to do what these people wouldn't do for me. So. Wow, we got 23 people watching. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, God, all my people here. I love this. Oh, Christian said his Christmas was peaceful. That sounds so good. Celebrate Hanukkah. I, I don't celebrate anything this time of year. <laughs> um, but I do participate in the Christmas um, holiday just because peer pressure. <laughs> I mean, my family does it and everybody else does. So it's like, ah, I guess I got to because, you know, I like spending time with family. But, yeah, we had a good day. Two days full of, like, amazing home-cooked food. And you have not even had home-cooked food until you've had West Virginia food. We throw down. We throw down when it comes to food. And that's what I've been eating for two days. So, yeah, I am full and fat and got my stretchy pants on. I'm so ready for this. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got I got a cool new shirt. It's uh, I think my uncle got this one for me. My Wonder Woman shirt. My brother got me some nice pajamas and comfy blankets and stuff. So, and then my son he got like this Lego set, which is amazing. It's like all these Legos and a Lego table. I I think I might be a little bit more excited about it than he is. He got a Kindle, so he's like you know he's kind of obsessed with that. But I'm like, oh my gosh, Legos. Yeah.
Let's see. Um, I, will, I, mean, I guess I'm going to call you the other Kevin for right now. Um, he said, with all due respect, it feels very odd but refreshing to communicate with a progressive with similar ideals from the South. I hate the narrative of a divide created between us citizens. And yeah, I mean, that's what I started seeing. Like, when I started actually doing the research into this, I see that there are so many problems. It's across the board. Poverty, drug abuse, uh, you know, uh, lack of jobs, uh, you know, lack of uh, proper education. It's just we're all getting screwed, man. Yeah, Christian said Legos are, are great for the mind. Yeah. Oh my gosh, my youngest, he loves to build. He's a builder. He likes Minecraft. He likes he likes to build things up, knock them down, build them up again. You know, the whole process. He just he can do it just over and over again all day. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, no. Oh, that's awful. Michael Gaspar said, my company is laying off 1,400 people by March, yet is giving us, is that 2 million of us a $1,000 bonus? Oh, gosh, that's so, oh, my gosh, that's rough. I'm not, I don't know what state you live in, but I know that feeling. My mom works for the hospital here, which, you know, the main hospital, uh, Charleston Area Medical Center. And they're supposed to be laying off a few hundred people. Um, and which doesn't seem like that much, but in a state here, when it, when her hospital is one of the largest employers, laying off a couple hundred people is a big deal. And why are they doing it? It's not that they don't have the money. They're one. Of, they are the number one hospital in West Virginia. They have the money. They have all this, but they're going to lay people off because apparently, Dave Ramsey, their president, um, needs a couple more million dollars for his paycheck. So yeah, he's already making several million a year, and it's like, why are you making millions of dollars? I understand, you know, running a hospital is not easy, but. Neither is being a CNA, neither is being a nurse or a doctor, and they're not making that much money. So, I don't know, man, maybe spread it around a little bit instead of laying people off. Oh, gosh, y'all are talking Super Bowl in the chat now. Y'all done lost me, okay? I know, I know so little about sports. There are teams, and there are balls involved, and, you know... You should get to one end of the, the area and get your ball there. That's about it. <laughs> I don't know anything about sports. Went through a very, very brief period where I liked college football when I was in, in, in college. But that lasted about a semester, which is about how long I lasted in college. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, Dax Jacobs, Jacobson said they they say we don't make anything in America anymore except homeless and trouble for the rest of the world. Amen to that, man. That's all I see turning out misery, misery on a massive scale, misery for the Middle East, misery for the people that live here. Ain't nobody winning except for the one percent. And it, you know, and, and that's the thing. Like I've been binge watching Star Trek Voyager, we might delve in, we might have just like a small, like Jamal 420 talk because I have been binge watching Star Trek Voyager like crazy, man, like crazy. I freaking love this show. I used to think that Picard was my favorite captain. It might be a little blasphemous, but Captain Janeway, I think is my new favorite captain. Man, she knows how to run a ship. I, I just, I love her style. I love her style. It's like a little bit of Picard with a little bit of like, you know, like a little bit more friendly, compassionate. Anyway, so I've been watching this. Where does, oh, okay. Uh, Joseph was asking where I live. I live in uh, West Virginia. Yeah, I live in Southern West Virginia. It's, um, I live in the, uh, the capital city, Charleston, and um, it's kind of this, 
intersection of um, there's coal country and then there's Chemical Valley. And I live in, I always thought I lived in Chemical Valley, but it, they kind of overlap because I live so close to Boone and Logan. So, yeah, I'm getting screwed by a lot of different people right now. But, um, yeah, I, I'm watching Star Trek and to see them, you know, some of the, the different episodes, the things that they have to go through. Now, I just watched one and I don't remember the title of it. But everybody in the ship, all they want to do, all they want to do, they're just trying to get home. They do, that's all the, their whole goal, you know, but they want to do so ethically. You know, they've come across different ways that they could have gotten home before. But, you know, uh, either, you know, those those aliens didn't want to, like, share their, you know, technology or something would come up to where, you know, it wasn't ethical or they would have to go and, like, you know, do something unethical in order to gain that ability to get home. So, anyway, so they found, in this episode, they found a wormhole, and it just seemed perfect. And, of course, Seven of Nine, the ex-Borg that's on ship, tries to tell them something about this. You know, it just smells fishy, okay? The, uh, the, 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 the chances of finding a wormhole here would be infinitesimal. Like, there's just no way we're going to find, I mean, it's, practically, it's not going to happen. That's the odds. And somehow we found a perfect wormhole that just that's going to lead us back to Earth. It just seems a little too convenient, um, you know. And then all these people are getting all these letters in from you know from Earth, and oh, we're going to make you ambassador, and we're going to give you your dream job, and you're going to see your family. And it was just uh, yes, Dax, that's right, the fake wormhole that that leads into a monster that eats ships. And she's like, yeah, this just isn't right. And so what they do is. They, the two people, well, there's three people on the ship, but the two adults that could see through it, the doctor and seven of nine, they deactivated them because they were telling them things that they didn't want to hear. They were saying uncomfortable truths, you know? So what did they do? They shut them down. And I'm like, man, is that not just the perfect metaphor for like what we're going through right now? It's not that we, we are living in a country full of just, stupid people i think that people are are wildly more intelligent than what we give them credit for but if there's something that you want so badly and you've got somebody that's promising it to you your own brain will tell you i mean it's it's almost like you just can't even help it it's like this is everything I ever wanted and then you've got this nagging little voice off to the side telling you no it's not you know <laughs> but you know they had to find out the hard way. They had to go literally into the belly of the beast and be saved by these people in order for them to say, oh, I was wrong, you know? Um, Schultz, you want to know, are many of you from West Virginia? I have a hankering to visit your state really bad. I was just reading the wiki. I live in the PNW near Seattle. I'm not sure what PNW is, but uh, that's Seattle, Washington, I guess. I don't know. I think we have a few people here from West Virginia or, you know, there's a lot of people here that, well, I don't know if a lot, but there's a few people here that have, you know, ties to uh, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Michael Gaspar asks, isn't living in coal country or chemical valley detrimental to your health, detrimental to your and your family's health, bad air, bad water, low employment, are you that deeply rooted in West Virginia ever think of moving? Yeah, I have. I've been close to a couple of times, but then, you know, like I said with Graham, you know, I have my Batman moment and I know what's important to me. I see so many good people here and I, I don't want to abandon them. It feels like I'm running out of a, out of a, a burning building and not pulling the fire alarm if I don't say something. So uh, I'm still open to moving. Um, but for right now, I just, I want to see what I can do here because I feel like there's some good people here that are still fighting the fight and I'm going to try and, you know, collaborate with them and see what we can do because, man, it's just sad to see. I, it's sad to see so many good people just end up in the garbage because, you know, coal is more important because, I mean, our, our, 
our health is garbage here. Our air is so awful. Our water, you can't drink it. You can't breathe the air. The soil's toxic. Uh, you know, the jobs, the drugs. But at the same time, it's like, you know, we're still dealing with a lot of the same thing that where, where could I move? Where could I move? That's like safe. That is, you know, that has good paying jobs that has all these things. And I don't, I mean, of course there are states that are way better off than what we're doing here, but I don't know, man, I got to try to fix it before I move. Like I'm one of those people. It's like, I, I got to give everything a hundred percent, try everything before I give up. I, I'm not one of those people that, that gives up easily. And plus it's fun giving Joe Manchin hell. <laughs> Oh, if I said they nicknamed the new Kevin, they'll have to let me know. Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're speaking my language. Okay. Uh, Schultze 100 said, I met someone from West Virginia when I was in Washington, D.C. processing the Keystone Pipeline. And thank you for doing that because it's garbage. Um, but since then, I wanted to learn more about Appalachia, and I can't stand mountaintop removal. Neither can I. It contributes to so, well, first of all, it contributed to unemployment because they were trying to do with underground mining and switch more to mountaintop, which requires way less people. So first of all, it hit our unemployment, or, you know, it, we took a hit on our employment. Second of all, all the, the pollution and the toxins and chemicals and stuff that it releases into the environment just the process of getting it out of the mountain, it's horrible. It's horrible to our health. And then you look at, okay, once you get the, the coal out and all this, you know, what are we using it for? Uh, you know, we have coal fired power plants, which just only adds to all the, the sickness and illnesses around here. You know, we have a, a, a high rate of birth defects, autism, cancer, all this stuff, and it all stems from coal. So, yeah, and it, but it's such a weird place to live because as horrible as it is, I mean, when you look at us on paper, it's it's bad. It's pretty bad. But growing up here, it's, it's like nature, you know? Like nature is like, damn, you scary. And then there's nature that's beautiful, breathtaking, and that's everything that, like, West Virginia is. There's so much ugliness here because of the coal companies and stuff, but there's so much beauty here and it's not just the nature, but the, in the people in our way of life. And I just love it. I think the people here are worth fighting for. Um, Joseph asked, are there progressive polygene type candidates running for office at the local level in West Virginia? Yeah, I interviewed um, one of them, um, Elliot Pritt. Uh, he's running in the mountain party. He was a, um, Democratic Socialist, but he switched because, you know, there's issues with that. So he switched to the Mountain Party, which is our version of the Green Party. And he's running, um, oh gosh, I don't know. I don't think Dave, I don't think Independent Outsiders here, but, oh, I wish I could remember her name. Uh, there's another woman that's running. Um, Richard Ojeda, even though he's pro-coal, but the thing is, he drank the Kool-Aid. He was born, raised work to the mines he's he's everything else he's so progressive well but coal he still fights for coal which is deeply depressing um let's see where oh i lost my place here all right let's see where we're at yeah <laughs> rebel k trailer so what the hell happened to your area since I was there, it was beautiful way back then. Oh yeah. Gosh, there's just so much beauty here. But even like our, our places that are, that were supposed to be off limits, you know, that were for tourists and rich people like New River Gorge, the pollution is so bad. It's leaking into those areas. The water's becoming toxic there. Uh, as much as I want business to come here, don't white, white water raft in West Virginia anymore because the water just is not safe. Our Kevin and other Kevin. Okay. 
Oh, Claire McCaskill. Yeah, I can't wait for her to get primaried either. I can't wait for most of these people to get primaried. Mm-hmm. Our Kevin said mountaintop removal is dumb. It is. I mean, it is. We we go through this big, elaborate, toxic process to get a resource that is obsolete. Absolutely obsolete. Kevin Clone. It's <laughs> another good one. Yeah. I need to start doing the phone banking for Paula Jean. I'm not, I, I have completely fallen off the grid the past couple of weeks. I want to tell you. Like, I have watched, um, I've tried to keep up on the news, you know, between, you know, people telling me what's going on and YouTube videos, but, buddy, I've taken my vacation. I've checked out. <laughs> I did. I checked out, man. Like, I was, I'm watching Star Trek and, um, doing a little else, like trying to, you know, I don't know, I've got a few things going on in my life. I've been trying to get that in order. My son's been having some issues with school, behavioral learning. So I've been having to do a lot of time with him, trying to get him caught up. But hopefully this new year, I'm going to be doing um, a live stream with Independent Outsider and um, get back on track because, yeah, I've gotten a little lazy in my videos and stuff. So... Oh, y'all are so nice, I swear. Yeah, I, I thought that was pretty funny. There was a, um, a coal museum in, in Kentucky that is being powered by solar panels, which is like, that's what I want to see here. I want to see coal that is so obsolete that we have a museum dedicated to it. You know, like we do have a museum, but it's like, how do you have a museum? I mean, like, how do you have a museum when it's not history yet? It's not, I, I don't know. It's like, we still advocate for it. We still have jobs in it. It's not history yet. It's not our past. Let's make it our past. Let And then let's make a museum of it. But no, we're still pushing for it. And out of a state that has 1.8 million people, we only have 3,000 coal miners. And yet they want to make everybody think that like coal miners are like this big booming industry. There are no coal miners here. I mean, I've seen person after person after person get laid off and then they end up having to work these really, you know, I mean, not that coal mining is a, you know, fancy job or nothing, but they have to work way harder for way less money. To, to pay for stuff that is overpriced anyway. <sighs> it's like, yeah, maybe it's time that we should, I don't know, maybe try something different. But, you know, they're still getting paid by the coal companies, so, you know, which I can't even say that anymore. It's mostly fracking and uh, pharmaceutical. I mean, the big pharma is the, is the monster that nobody talks about. Uh, Coal is huge here, or it used to be, but there, that's kind of like, yeah, I mean, I'd like to see, yeah, Schultz, said, is there even a thousand coal miners there? There, it might be now, because the last time I checked, it was 3,000, but it could, it, it definitely could have dropped since then. Oh my gosh, I got 32 people watching. That's so cool. On a Chris on Christmas night. I'm honored. Uh-huh. Yep. Kevin said, you know, all this shit costs money. Museums are great, but we need health care. Uh, and on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, museums are definitely lower my you know priority list like let's kind of get some health care and jobs for people let's let's make life livable for these people again i mean we've got a country a full country that is doped out on either opiates or depression medicine you know they're working you know insanely long hours at multiple jobs or you're so broken unemployed 
you know, there's just so much to take care of. It's a system that's so broken. I don't even know how to go about fixing it because it's just, it's like putting a Band-Aid on, on an amputation. But, you know, I'll do what I can and learn along the way. And that's all I can do, you know, I'm doing all I can. And that's what y'all are doing, too. I mean, y'all are y'all show up. Y'all y'all make a point to, you know, try to educate yourselves on, you know, not only what's going on in your area, but, you know, you take the time to listen about what's going on in my area, which I think is is great because that's how we know about this stuff. I mean, like I didn't know about how bad like the California you know housing prices were. You know, because the housing prices here, y'all would pass out if y'all knew the housing prices here. I mean, it is so low. But the thing is, we have so many poor people here that nobody can afford the dirt poor housing that's here. So, yeah, I've, I've noticed our, our homeless population has definitely grown. Um, it used to be maybe you'd see like a couple of homeless people here and there. Um, but, you know, I went down to the mound, which is in, in South Charleston. And there, I saw at least 10 homeless people there in, in the middle of the day, which usually in the middle of the day, you know, you don't see, you know, too many. It's usually, you know, later at night that you, you'll see them camping out down there. But, man, it's sad. It's like these are people with mental illnesses. These are people with, with you know, that are down on their luck, you know, maybe, you know, drug addiction, stuff like that. And it's, these aren't bad people. They just had bad things happen to them. So... <laughs> Schultzy 100 said, "Keen doing any of that clog dancing? That looks like a gas. I can't. I can do see do. I can, oh, I can do see do. Yeah, I I've been known to do a little clogging. It may not be good, but <laughs> uh, who gives a shit? It's fun. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have ever seen this. I wish I could find the link for it, but it's pictures of like these old people clogging." And they've dubbed it over with rap music, and they look gangster as fuck, man. <laughs> I mean, they look so cool. You put the, the the country bluegrass music with it, and they just looks like some old rednecks dancing. Put that rap music with it, they got some moves. <laughs> Everything looks cooler with rap music, though. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that, Jake. Nina Nina Turner follows uh, Jake Smith on on Twitter. That's cool. Yeah, I thought about doing like a clogging video. I don't know though. It's like so relevant. <laughs> oh no. Mm -mm. Uh, Forsaken Companion said, Are you going to dance, Stevie? Not tonight. Not tonight. But maybe on New Year's, once you get a little liquor in me, I might. <laughs> I might have to <laughs> get the, the redneck urge just to start clogging. Uh, you saw my dance moves. This is, you know, I have white girl dance moves. I, I'm not good. <laughs> Oh no, Fly's gonna break out the twerking donut gift. <laughs> yeah, um, the, Kevin said uh, Nina Turner rocks, which that was the first time I got to see um, both Jake Smith and Nina Turner, which was equally awesome at that Mobilize 88 summit. That, you know, if it wasn't for Jake and for Karen Smith, I wouldn't have made it out there, but I got to go out there and meet, you know, Paula Jean. Um, oh, Amy Valela, I think that's her name. Um, uh, let's see, Nina Turner, uh, Tara, mostly samples. There was a lot of good people out there. And there, you know, there were some people that were just so like tunnel vision, like we got to reform the Democrats and I'm a Democrat and Republicans, you know, but for the most part people, oh yes. Oh my God. I can't believe I forgot a Noah. Yeah. Jake, thanks for reminding me. A Noah Changa. Um, Stacy Hopkins, uh, they're really good. Yeah, she was sweet as could be. Which I know has spent some time here in West Virginia. She knows what it's like. Yeah, she's had to deal with that crap. I think that's why we get along so good. She's lived everywhere though. She's she's been all all across this country. Yeah, I need to do a I need to do a show with her. I'd love to have her on because she's like smart as a whip man like she's been to college she's done all this she's been she's been in it for a while like i'm i'm still rather new to this i've been doing it for a couple of years but 
Yeah, man, she knows her stuff. Although, you know, there's some stuff I still disagree with her on. Wait, what happened? Somebody passed away? Me too, Shirley. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kevin said it's a lot more difficult to go from having disposable income to being basically impoverished. Yeah. And this was something that that Kelly opened my, my eyes up to because it's like when you're new to a situation, you don't know what to do. I grew up poor. I, I'm like the bane of poverty. Like I was I was born in it. I was molded in it. Like, you know, this is this is all I know. Like I know I know how to survive. I know I know what metals I can take and, and scrap for money. I know what what I can take to a pawn shop and sell. I know what, you know, like these are ways like I know, you know, you know, which churches give out free dinners on Sunday. But if you are used to having income and which is a lot of people these days, they went from having a good job or having steady money and they're going, you know, fresh, new into poverty. It is such a shock and they don't know what to do. They don't know how to survive. They don't know what their options are. They don't know where to go to get help or, or, or any of this stuff. And it's just like they ju they're just dropped into this whole new world that they don't know how to live in. So it's like in some ways I'm a little bit more advantaged because I, I know, you know, you know, some people out there, they've never had to do their own laundry. You know, they've always had a maid do that, or they've always had a, a, a yard worker to mow their lawn. They don't know how to do these things. They even know how to do things, you know, like just basic everyday stuff. And it's just like, you know, and then you're poor and you can't afford for somebody else to wash your clothes and wash your dishes and do your yard. You're just like, that. you know, you don't know what to do. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I definitely got it. Yeah, I, I feel for him on that, but it's, but at the same time, I'm like, at least you got a little bit of time in that, you know, where you didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, speaking of laundry, independent outsider has to go get his. <laughs> Oh, Kevin wanted to add something on the homeless thing. Um, oh, independent outsider is a migraine. That, that sucks, man. But he's going to do a, a live stream if it subsides, hopefully. You know, and that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, Rebel Cage Rattler said, I'd much rather be poor and do my own things. At least I get to feel rich and pride for a job well done. And, and money can't make me feel like that. And I, and that's the thing. You know, especially, and I'm going, I might have to go into my Christmas rant. But, and that's the thing. It's like people don't have it anymore. It's like you just, people are so used to that instant gratification. They're used to just, if something breaks, you just go out and you buy another one. If you need something, you know, it's just everything. We're, we live in a, a disposable culture where, you know, everything that we have, our cell phones, our everything is just throwaway. Everything is throwaway. Even the people, they're just throwaway. Now you're damaged, whatever. Throw you out. We'll make some more, you know, whatever. And it's just, you know, nobody takes pride in, in fixing things up and, and working and stuff. It's just like, and I understand because people are so busy surviving it's like how do i have time to take pride in doing something well when i could pay a dollar for it you know and just be done with it but you know and that's one cool thing i know um james manitalk just put up a video where you know him and his kid made a skateboard together and and i think that's just amazing first of all um because it's hard to find children these days that want to do that kind of thing that want to spend time with their parents or want to go. I mean, most kids are like, just buy me a skateboard dad, you know, 
But, you know, his kid actually wanted to take the time out and put in the work and the effort of crafting something that he wanted. And when you do that, when you're able, and, and, and the biggest resource right now is time. You know, I mean, hell, we don't got money. So, you know, our biggest resource is time. And for a kid to actually, like, actually take the time out, you know, with school, sports, all this stuff, take the time out to to make something with his with, with his own hands is, is a pretty big pretty big deal. So I thought that was really cool. Robert Schultz, what do you have to say? I don't want to skip that. But I restore old cars so I see the pride in bringing something broken back to life. Yeah, I mean, I've done that with, with furniture. I've, I've seen stuff that, okay, don't judge me, <laughs> but I'm a former dumpster diver. I could be, I could be one now, but um, I used to back in the day, you know, if you go to the nice neighborhoods on trash day, you'll see that they, I mean, rich people throw stuff away that isn't even broken. It's just like, well, it's not in fashion, so I'm just going to get rid of it. So, or if you hit up like the Goodwill or the, you know, um, uh, Salvation Army that's like adjacent to rich neighborhoods, <laughs> you'll find some like really good stuff. But I used to do that. I mean, there's been a time or two that my family's thrown me in a dumpster to pull some stuff out. So I definitely see, and it's just stuff that they think is trash. But if you put a little bit of work into it, maybe, you know, put some new fabric on a, on a couch or, you know, just different stuff, man. The desk I got right here that I'm using right now, I got, that was, it was sitting next to a dumpster in some, some rich neighborhood. I was like, well, that's mine. Snatch it up. <laughs> you know? And it was free. It's a perfectly good desk. There's nothing wrong with it. And uh, this cabinet uh, right here uh, was, got thrown out of a doctor's office. You know, this one that, you know, I got, you know, from my grandma after she passed, but, you know, and, and it's something unique. When you fix it up yourself, it's unique. You know, it's exactly what you want. You know, it's not something else. You're like, well, it's all right. It's most of the things that I want. No, it's exactly to a T what you want. You get the pride of putting the work in and it, most of the time it's a lot cheaper. Oh my God, fly. Oh, I can see that. Floss said, sadly, it may soon become illegal property of waste management companies. I do not doubt. Don't give them any ideas. Buddy, that's how I get my furniture. <laughs> I got my kitchen table from the dumpster. I, <laughs> I know it sounds trashy as hell, but come on, man. Clean it up. Put some bleach on it. It's good to go. <laughs> Chelsea said, there's treasure in there. Sometimes dinner, too. Put a little ketchup on it. If it tastes a little funky, put a little ketchup on it. Does a trick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joe, or Jake Smith, as we know him here, uh, he said, do you think the internet will be saved? It better be, if I got anything to say about it. Dude, that's like our last place for conversation. I mean, there's so many things. They shut down. Okay, when I was a kid, we used to have the regatta, which was a huge deal in the summer. All these people, businesses would come together and, you know, um, like the business was, businesses would shut, set up shop, you know, at the festival. All these people would come in. We used to have uh, bands like, uh, you know, um, Julian Lennon, you know, John Lennon's son, he came in, uh, you know, Lots of different people, but the big part was it was a thing for families to go to together, and then you mingle with all these other people. But now we don't have like stuff like that. We don't have like these big activities where people can get together and like just communicate with their neighbors. Um, I mean, when we used to be one of those people that you know everybody knew everybody, and now it's like we've we've shut our doors, we've gone inside, we've you know, pulled the curtains and, you know, we'll peek out just to make sure nobody's trying to rob us. That's, you know, basically, yeah, like we just don't care about our neighbors anymore. I mean, we used to take great pride in that. We used to be very, um, you know, uh, what's the word for it? Mm, communal, I think it's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, we just... 
We don't do that anymore, but I wish we did, man. And that's another reason why I started speaking out on this. I just saw people that were so loving and so caring that would help out, you know, any stranger. I mean, you can't walk past somebody here without, you know, it doesn't matter if you know them or not. You just wave and you say, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, and it went from that to just, you know, walking by people and, and looking at them crossing the street. You know, like you don't you don't do that anymore. It's just sad. Oh, Independent Outsider said so you just got a bunch more subs. Yeah. Independent Outsider is awesome. He's got burning hair and he don't care. <laughs> he, he's really good about doing the short, sweet, and to the point videos. See, I get a little long-winded. Uh, I'm somewhere between Independent Outsider and Jamal. <laughs> Jamal can go on for hours. Love the guy. But he can go on for hours on a topic. And I could if you get me talking. I can. Man, I'm from the holler. I don't get to talk to people a whole lot. So when I get people around, like, I'll gab your ear off now. Let me see what else we got. One. Oh, oh no, caught them bit. Hold on. I know everybody's getting sick, man. Everybody's getting sick right now. I know it's winter, but this is just not, it just keeps coming back. I can't kick this. I might actually see a doctor. God, it sounds like, like rich people stuff. Well, I might just have to see a doctor. I'm not feeling quite so well. <laughs> yeah. Rosenfield. 10 my videos go on for over 30 minutes oh buddy when i first started i was so bad about that i get to gavin man and then i'm looking i'm like oh it's been an hour oh it has been an hour <laughs> we have we have we've been gavin for an hour oh so do you do videos and stuff uh rosenfield like what do you talk about i'm gonna check your channel out i'm always looking for people always looking for people I can, you know, even if it's not p political or whatever, I watch a lot of stuff like on, on gaming. Now, y'all, y'all let me know what you think about this. I like, I like video games. I used to love video games, but then politics happened. So I didn't really have a lo whole lot of time for it, but I'd like for my channel, I, I just an idea. Once I get my PC fixed up to where it's like actual like game worthy, I want to go back to PC gaming. I, I'm I'm doing gaming on Xbox 360 right now. It's garbage. The controls suck. Uh, I just want to go back to PC. I miss it. So I was thinking like what I'd like to do is a lot of times um, I I want to do uh, live streams and stuff, but you know if you don't take that time out each day to like relax and unwind you're going to burn yourself out. So, you know, I can't always do the live streams, but if I can mix that with gaming, then I can get my relaxation on while doing that. So if I can do like live streams where I can like play the video of, you know, the gaming and have people come on, you know, and play games with me and stuff, you know, we can all like, you know, do like a, a group, you know, um, do a party together or whatever. And just talk about politics. So it'd be kind of like, I had to manage my time very carefully between the kids and, you know, house and looking for a job and all this. I just got a lot on my plate. So I'm trying to find ways to, to squeeze in more, you know, YouTube time. So I don't know if that's something y'all would be interested in watching. It'd be the same thing, but, you know, just sometimes instead of looking at my boring face, you know, we'll actually get to like watch a game or something. Yeah, and yeah, Kevin said it gives you a lot more options in games, plus it's still a PC, which I thought that would be the smarter investment because instead, I need a PC. I need a PC for all the stuff that I do with YouTube and all that, but I also like my gaming, so it's like kill you know, two birds with one stone, just get, the, get a good PC and don't have to go through, you know, Microsoft and Xboxes and all that stuff. 
Plus, I like all the mods and stuff. Uh, I used to have a Steam account, and it's just so much more fun when you can like add mods to it. Do y'all want to? I don't know if I can do a link for people to join in. Can I do that? Is there a way to do that? If y'all want to join in, I mean, the, the more the merrier, buddy. Anyway, yeah, y'all just let me know if um, if y'all want to join in. I'll just post the link there. I think I'll post the link there if I got the right one. Hopefully. Let's see. Add friends. Oh, okay. I think I found the link for it. No snicker dicks in here, man. I'll boot you. And if y'all aren't familiar with the snicker dick incident of 2017, just uh, go check out Independent Outsiders. Um, channel yeah he got he got trolled oh forsaken companion prefers console gaming hmm. which one um you got playstation xbox oh my god michael caspar mentioned curling at the winter olympics I was up there at mom's house yesterday and we were flipping through the channels and <laughs> <laughs> curling was on and we just stopped and watched it and was like, what? <laughs> it was like extreme brooming, you know, <laughs> like I don't understand. Like we'll throw a rock and then people will like sweep like crazy. And then like, I don't, I don't understand the whole plot of it, but I don't understand a lot about sports. So Football is just as easily lost to me. <laughs> the weird is, oh, the weird isn't working. The link isn't working. All right, let me see if I can find this again. I'm going to get this right. Like I said, y'all got to just bear with me. I'll figure it out. Let's see. Oh, I'd like to. Oh, oh, bud. Oh, Rosenfield. Watching my seven-year-old son live videos right now would be chaotic. See, that's why I usually get on here late at night. Is be usually late at night or first thing in the morning because that's when my son's either asleep or at school. Because there, I don't even know if I could um, do one while he's awake because this house would be upside down and on fire. <laughs> Especially with boys, man. You can't leave boys alone for a second. They're just way too inquisitive girls like like louis ck said girls will will kill you on the inside they will break your mind and your soul boys will break physical things like your coffee table or your tv things that can be replaced <laughs> let me see if i got this right oh i hope i didn't i think i'll have to copy it again let's see i'm just gonna start copying links hopefully one of them will work eventually is that even a link? Oh, James is back. I don't know if that works. Yeah, curling is a skill. And then, I'm sure it is. I just, it's lost on me. <laughs> Something's gonna work. Oh my god, it'd be so much better having people on here. It feels weird. Like I know I'm 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 having conversations with the people in chat, but it's like when you don't have a face to look at, it kind of feels like you're rambling. Oh, what is that? It feels oh. like I know I'm 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 Oh, what is that? Oh, it feels like I know I'm 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 Okay, so Hello. Oh hey. Dax, thank you. Oh my god, you're on here. That's so cool. I think, uh, did you mute your YouTube? I think I heard it a little bit, but. Yeah, I did. Okay, all right. Cool. How are you doing? How's your Christmas? <laughs> it's in progress. I was yeah. going to go watch a movie. Probably at 10. It's I'm in California, so I got a bit more time. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, what movie are you going to watch? Um, either Molly's Game or... Uh, I, Tanya. Hmm. I haven't heard of either one of those. Uh, 
So I don't know. Probably I, Tanya. It's, it's a, starts at 10 20. So. Wait, Chelsea, you used to do Caroline. That's pretty cool. Maybe you can shed some light on it. Cause I, oh, man. But then again, like if you look at football and stuff, it just looks like, you know, a bunch of guys, you know, just running back and forth on the field. It doesn't, I don't know. So I'm, I know there's a lot more to it. It always looks more simple from the outside, but I just don't. I guess if it was explained to me, I'd get it a little bit better. So, okay, we got, is that independent on here? Yeah, we got independent outsider. Hey. Uh, hi. I don't know if I'm ready for you to see my face yet. <laughs> uh, hold on. Oh, I turned my video on. Oh, that's weird. Okay. All right. I'm still here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn my camera off for just a couple of minutes, but I'm still going to stay here and chat with y'all. Oh, there we go. Uh. Oh. oh man, Chelsea's just pulling her leg. He didn't do curling. Mm. You got me. You got me fooled there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what just happened or or who. Oh, okay. You guys still hear me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it must be an old screen. Um, yeah, my my uh, YouTube just exploded. Apparently, people, you know, a couple of people saw saw my stuff, or I haven't been posting videos, and all of a sudden, people really like me because I haven't been posting videos. <laughs> it's weird. I got like five five people. I don't know what they saw. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to. I don't know. See, like, that's the thing. It's like, I'll, I sometimes I'm not able to do the videos, you know, like all the time. I mean, Jamal's a, a machine. Like, he just turns them out like all day, every day. I don't know how the dude does it, but I, I, I don't know. If I'm not doing this, I do want to promote people. Um, if I'm not able to do live streams, I at least can like retweet somebody or, or get, you know, advocate right. for other. So it's like, you know, uh, I try to put your, you out there, you know, let the madness begin. You know, people like that, that I usually watch. Well, well I, I, ooh, ooh. oh, Snork's here. Hey. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> oh, okay. No more echo. Um, I have a new guy to, uh, to promote. Johnny Axum is a real deal. So I, I don't know if people know him yet, but he's the real deal. And hopefully I'm going to be uh, interviewing him in a couple of weeks. So Wait, who are you interviewing? Uh, Johnny Axum cool. running for uh, Minnesota office. But he's, he's, I, I was impressed by, by how he's been talking. He's talking about, you know, the role of the role of the politician and the activist is to create their own obsolescence. I've been saying that for years now and he's you know talking about paul wellstone he's from minnesota i'm like keep you know keep talking i'm, I'm watching you now <laughs> so yep well that's neat yeah All right, and, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 i think jake, uh, what go ahead jake is uh he's a smoke screen mm. that whole drink thing is a smoke screen I don't even care. I feel like he's just a useful idiot that the establishment is using. I don't think he's malicious in his heart. I think he's just a big dumb idiot. And that these people <laughs> in power see a big dumb idiot with a giant platform that they can take advantage of. Um, I don't know if he's aware of it or if people just I, I just have a feeling that he's this giant grenade that the opposition is is using towards the left to make the left look like assholes all of a sudden because 
yeah, Drake is Drake is a buffoon and Drake is a sexist buffoon. But we've known that for for a, I've known it for over a decade. Yeah. So why, why, you know, why get all freaked out about it now? Yeah, it's like the whole Donna Brazil thing that just came out. It's like, oh, well, Donna Brazil is, you know, is saying that it was rigged. Well, no shit. Anybody that was paying attention already knew this. You're a little late on your game news. I mean, come on. Same thing with Jake. He's been saying dumbass, piggish, you know, sexist stuff for as long as I can remember. Way back before I even started watching TYT. And he's still saying it to this day. So why did they have to go back 20 years to find some stupid stuff? Hell, watch yesterday's live stream. I'm sure he said some stupid stuff then. Just oh. watch it. Watch every time uh, Anna Kasparian rolls her eyes. Oh, look. Um, <laughs> you know, whatever. I, I can't. Uh, I think uh, you know. I I'm gonna do a uh, I'm gonna do like a bullshit man kind of just montage stream where mm -hmm. all all the times that uh, that independent media has said the word tits. I mean, <laughs> tits, 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 tits. <laughs> I mean, what's, what's the, you said ice titties before, too. I'll get you in there. I know. I was, I was just thinking, I was like, oh, shit, how many times have I said titties on there? <laughs> I mean, have we learned nothing from George Carlin? They're words. They're fucking words. They're mm -hmm. words. I mean, yeah, George, well, some words George Carlin so brings up a... Yeah, especially when you put them on paper. God. Yeah, it's like it means the same thing. It means the exact. I remember the first time I ever said the word crap. Dude, my family had a meltdown. They were like, you're cussing. I'm like, it's crap. It's not a cuss <laughs> word. They're like, yes, it is. And I'm like, but is, is poop a cuss word? No. Nope. I can say crap. No. I definitely can't say shit then, I guess. But, you know, it's like. I don't get it. Or what was I watching? They just pointed that out. It was like they were talking about, you know, if you say asshole on the radio, they bleep out hole. Right. Or it, or on TV, if they say uh, goddamn, they'll they'll bleep out God. It's like, you're what? I don't even understand the, the process. Who is in charge of this? Is this is this back to a Jeep pie? Is it, can we blame a Jeep pie for this? <laughs> He's FC. Oh. Yeah. I have. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I think they shouldn't beep out, bleep out words. I think they should substitute something more fun. <laughs> they they did that actually. Um, Howard Stern did that. You know, like he for motherfucker. He said mother confetti or some shit. He he did that before. That was, that's an old idea. Um, no, it's, instead of motherfucker, right? Goose mother fucker. confetti, right? <laughs> But they would they would overdub it. They would. Yeah. <laughs> I I also like the unnecessary um, censorship. I can't remember who did that. Oh, that's good. Where they would take a normal conversation and just bleep out a word. <laughs> oh my gosh! The best one I ever saw was the Count from Sesame Street, and he's t singing a song about how much he loves counting. But every time he said counting, they bleeped it out. So it's like, I love bleeping, I love bleeping. I can bleep all day, bleep the walls and all. <laughs> it's like, oh, God, it just, it took a turn for, for bad. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, have you all ever watched Aqua Teen Hunger Force? They yes. had an episode on, on this, and they were talking about, like, the FCC and how they bleep stuff. And it was like a nun. They, they shot this nun in the head, and it's like all this blood coming out. They're like, no, this is bad. And then they show the nun getting shot, and a rainbow comes out. They're like, this is appropriate. We can show this. Don't show what really happens. Show the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to watch anime with my kids, and there would be a whole bunch of anime that they, they for some reason, at one year, Japan stopped showing blood and started showing the, like rainbow-colored blood coming out. <laughs> Oh, I have not seen that. That uh, oh my gosh, it's funny. Yeah, I don't know. Japan's weird about what they censor and what they don't. Man. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're they're very good about conforming. If 
they oh, come yeah. up with the idea, all of them do it immediately. My, oh. my brother-in-law in Japan used to say, there'd be some new fad. You'd see one person doing it one day, and you'd see the entire country doing it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I don't doubt it. Hey, Y'all ever hear about the redneck um, culture over there? Oh my no. God. <laughs> there, I mean, you know how they have like these different little, you know, clicks and stuff. You know, you've got your anime cosplayers, you know, all this different. There's a group over there and they absolutely adore redneck culture. Trucks, mullets, you know, like the trashy, you know, <laughs> stuff you see people wear on cops, you know, wife beaters. And it just blew my mind. I'm like, wow, we're cool somewhere. <laughs> you know? I just moved to Japan. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Just go to Japan, get your, you know, get your uh, white tank top and your freaking plaid shirt, and they'll be, you know, they'll just be like, uh, 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 and everybody's <laughs> gonna be wearing white beaters and shit. Well, I'd be the coolest kid in the room, man. I'm original. <laughs> you got, you got, you got to, uh, you know, you got to uh, bring your uh, El Camino, your fucking, you know, seventies uh, El Camino down there. You'll oh. be a god. <laughs> I'm uh, so redneck. I don't even got a car. <laughs> I gotta hoof it, man. If I won't get anywhere, you got a, you got a red rider with a with a boat engine on the back. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been looking into that, like trying to find a way um, to like rig up something. I got. I know this is gonna sound bad, but I got my grandma's old. Um, oh, what are those called? The power scooters. I was like, if I can just tamper with that a little bit, put a wagon on the back, I can do this car. it'll work. It'll do. You got all these people around here. They're driving like golf go karts because you know DUIs and stuff. It's like, all right, so you can't have a license, but you can still operate a golf cart. I don't. I have a license, but I can't really drive because I don't have a physical copy. Yeah. So I was like, well, let me see what I can do. I can rig something up. You know, do some of that tech engineering. Figure out something. The hell are those things called? I can't even remember. Um, there, there, there's a name for it. For the little motorized wheelchairs, there's a name for it. But go karts are illegal in Virginia, or at, they were for a while, and they may have had, they may now have an age limit because there are a lot of like tw between 12 and 15 years old. One year, kids were dying left and right because because of the rollover, you know, the rollovers. So, but uh, my oh. car yeah. is uh, a salvage rebuild. I'm really proud of it, really happy about it. Um, for the amount of money I had saved up after, after my wife died, yeah. I really couldn't have got that nice a car. And I needed a car out here. To, we're, we're, we're remote, we're like West Virginia almost. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a tiny town, you have to go a long way. We, we do have a grocery store in town that I can walk to and stuff like that. But for a lot of things, you actually have to drive to another town to get them. And so I use Amazon, and that can be expensive. So five miles south of me, there's this place that buys, buys cars that are in accidents. And they'll buy two of the same model and put them together and get one good car. <laughs> and apparently, my car was totaled for hail damage. Wow. Hell damage? Really? Yeah, and you barely could tell it. But there was dents on every panel of the car. Well, uh, the, the front panel is like like a driver's light section is, is like a dollar. Go to the other or a thousand dollars. You go to the other side, it's another thousand dollars. You go to the hood, it's a thousand dollars. Pretty soon they just say totaled. Oh yeah, that's right. Because once the the cost of fixing it exceeds the amount that it's worth, they they'll trash it. Yeah. Yes. So I got a a, a, a two thousand two thousand nine Chevy Cobalt with uh, I think sixty eight or something thousand miles on it. <laughs> that's what I used cool. to drive was a Cobalt. I totaled yeah, it. Less than three thousand. Wow, that's amazing. And I've had it a year now. And, uh, um, you know, supposedly there was some part they took off of a different cobalt. Mm -hmm. I can't figure out what they took off the other cobalt. <laughs> uh, as far as I can tell, it might just have been the hail damage alone that was made it salvaged. 
And then I was real proud of it, how, how it hardly, none of the hail damage at all showed. We had a hail storm. My car was outside. The house had $20,000 damage from the hail. And now the, some of the, the hail uh, dents are visible in my car. But I still think it looks better than if I went out and got another car. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know how much they were charging me. I went through one of these. I was so naive when I bought my car. I didn't know that you're supposed to talk them down from the sticker price and all that. I just thought that that's just what you paid. I ended up I, they were I was supposed to be paying twelve thousand dollars for a Cobalt, and this was a um it was an early two thousand model, so it wasn't you know it wasn't that great. And for like fifteen dollars extra, I could have had like a really great car. But at the time, like it was like I have to go with the cheapest thing available. So I got that and what I was paying in interest, I, I was making about $300 car payments. 250 of that was just interest. Only $50 was going to actually pay off the thing. So I'm like, holy crap, I am never going to get this car paid off. Thank God it got totaled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was Bye. just happy to get a car without, you know, it was inexpensive enough. I was able to get it without a loan. Just, oh, that's, that is, uh, and that's really smart. I mean, people don't know. Uh, if you call around these junkyards, like if you're looking for a spare part or a tire or something, you call up these junkyards, a lot of times they have good parts and they're way cheaper than going and, you know, running for a store or whatever. So, yeah, it's a great alternative. But it's it's not a it's not a junkyard. That's all these guys do. They just keep buying two cars, put them together. Yep. Uh, and, and get it out. And, you know, um, Times are tight. I'm I'm concerned that that uh, Trump's going to move us into another depression. And yeah. uh, greatest depression ever. Yeah. Make I just right again. <laughs> don't want to be sitting on having any kind of uh, payment plan. And with with the uh, depression, I don't know. I I think. And if live, I've, I've talked about this a lot. We're moving into automation and AI way, way too quickly. And I pe think people are, you know, are retired and exhausted. And the idea of, uh, of driverless cars seems very uh, appeal you know, appealing to some people. and scares the hell out of me. Well, really I, I'm not as concerned there. Properly implemented. AI can really increase the number of jobs that we have. We just have to be thinking about how people are used. Our current society isn't built around helping each other. We've adopted something so different from where we were 100 years ago, where now it's your job is to make sure nobody else does better. Right. And if, if, we, if we had pop, properly trained people, I, I, one of the episodes I should do is be how, how to do because I've done this in the past, where I've used AI to save jobs and automation and uh, use it to save lives. I have one thing that I did in uh, 1991 that still saves an average of 19 lives a day. So uh, uh, the way, way it's presented is we're having a knee-jerk response against something that isn't that different from when we switched from people writing with pencils in New York to when we started using calculators. And then later on, Hollerith cards, the early precursor to computers where uh, the bank information was kept on cards and run through every night. The uh, New York really hasn't addressed that displacement of labor yet. Uh, is there, there are so many people in New York um, which used to need so many people to support the people who were pushing the pencils in the banks. That was New York City. So you, you had, for every so many people pushing a pencil, you had a barber. For every so many people pushing a pencil, you had a grocery store. Right. So for every, yeah, and, and all of these people started supporting each other. There started needing to be more and more people. Because when you have a million people pushing pencils, you need millions of people supporting them. And well, that that was that was really hurt by uh, by nine eleven. I mean, I, I mean, 
Well, well, I mean, even way, way back in the previous well, century, we uh, we started having slums because the, the people were being displaced, not needed. Physical labor wasn't needed anymore. And then other jobs came in. But we've never had a national system for uh, resolving displaced jobs. So it's not the automation's fault. It's our fault for not adapting to the new situation. If we don't adapt, I mean, if you think we're the only ones doing it, China's doing everything manually, that is incorrect. Uh, their plants are automated, and they're still getting more and more people working than we are. And people don't realize that. They think, okay, just go over and do it by hand by China. It's not being done over hand, by hand there. So when, if we ever want to get back into the industrial world again, we have to get back up to the level they are. We are far behind it. And uh, not very many people younger than me have made a major plant. So we're, we're losing the people who've lost the skill of designing factories. Do you think that at some point that I, I don't want AI to get to the point where people use them for uh, surgery or child care or anything that has to do with care of humans, teaching? Um, when it comes to being used for AI, if you have brain surgery, you, you have a much greater chance of a uh, recovery from from uh, a, a uh, automated sur surgery than you do from uh, somebody with a knife. Is that? But someone is actually controlling it, obviously. Well, You're what they're doing is they're controlling the waypoints, and the computer is figuring out the path of least damage. Okay. On the millimeter scale, whereas the human might be able to get to the nearest quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch of brain loss is a huge amount. I think that uh, as far as you know, automating some of this, the healthcare industry, it would be a huge win. I mean, uh, your level of care would be so much better. I mean, not only what you were saying, Snort, that you know, you're, you're, you know, the odds are better. You know, things turn out better. But on top of that, it's like the people that are working in that field have more time to actually care for the patient. Uh, having worked in the, the, the trauma and surgical ICU, I've seen so many people that went through there for like gastric bypasses. The dude that was doing the, the gastric bypasses, he should have retired like 20 years ago. But every surgery, almost every surgery that he did, his patients would end back up in the ICU because of, you know, he'd nick um, their bowels. It was human error that he would just keep, and some of them even died from it. And it's just like, well, those were lives that could have been saved. Um, you know, all this other stuff, you know, as far as like taking vitals, doing stuff like that, if we could automate that, because a lot of the nurses were so, they were caught up in the paperwork and they were caught up in doing like the routine, uh, you know, vitals and things like that, that like they didn't really have time to, how are you feeling or do you need repositioned and uh, are you comfortable? You know, and if we freed up some time for them to be able to do some of that stuff, a, a hospital stay would be so much more pleasant and it would even cut down on, on things like MRSA and stuff like that to where, you know, you wouldn't have these patient to patient trans, you know, um, transfer of like illnesses because right now you've got so many, a shortage of nurses that they're running around and they're taking care of, you know, patients that are just, you know, sick. And then there's patients that have like MRSA or C. diff and stuff like that. And then they're giving that to the patients that don't have it. So wow. now you have like this cross contamination that, you know, if we had some robots in there doing their vitals, we wouldn't have so much of that. I have to, I have to backtrack a little bit. Human, human to human interaction is what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. you know, a baby, you know, human child care, um, things that, that, uh, involve empathy, all of the, the mechanical stuff. I understand because we, we can only be so precise. Even the best surgeon on the planet can only be so, so precise. So, and when you're talking about brain surgery or, you know, this very complicated uh, bypass or trying to get rid of a tumor or whatever, you know, that's very tiny. Yeah, I could, I could get that. But to, uh, to tell, you know, to tell someone that their spouse had died, you don't want a robot. You want someone no, who no, has empathy. There are jobs that are more human involved. Right. We have to concentrate on, on 
on using the AI in a ways that makes the humans able to do their part of the job better. Right. Uh, the last yeah, factor I did. Free humans up to do human things. I mean, we have calculators to do math. We should have robots to do the, the you know, the tasks we use that we humans to be compassionate, to do that, the, that kind of thing, the human to human touch. So yeah, the I biggest, totally agree. The biggest factory we did with robots, we, we did a two to one, uh, two humans to every one robot because robots break down too. Right. And usually if we had to put in humans, we'd have to put in two, not one, <laughs> just to even keep the line at, at, a, at a reasonable pace. Uh, with brain surgery, my wife's primary surgery was with a human. Uh, totally messed up. She totally lost the use of uh, one side of her body. On the other tumor on the other side, if the robot had, had done as bad as the human, uh, would have just killed her right off. Uh, and she would have lost her eyesight at, at minimum. And so the eye doctor was just amazed. How were they able to take out the tumor without blinding her? <laughs> right. And it, it meant that uh, she had, they had to use the radiation to approximate a knife by sending a low dose at 40 million different angles into her brain so that it all accumulated to a, a dose that would kill the tumor where the part, little pieces of tumor had to be. So they were able to make this complete blob of the tumor. And they basically have this mass that fit to her head, to her bones, uh, that kept her from moving and they could place her exactly the same each time and, and go in. And, and like I said, uh, I don't know why they even bothered with the human surgeon for the first part. All right. Well, um, I, have a, I have a question for uh, Stevie because I know I mentioned that around, uh, around one Christmas when I was a kid, my mom went in for uh, surgery on her appendix and she almost died. Uh, the surgeon said that the appendix ruptured while it was in surgery. The way that they described it sounded like they actually nicked the appendix. Uh, that's very possible. Yeah. Very possible. I mean, it, she was extremely lucky because, you know, there was infection that, that got out. And I, um, you know, I'm very happy and lucky to have, you know, have had a mom for 25, 30 more years and than I could have. So, or actually 40 more years than I could have. So, but, yeah. um, yeah, I, I can I can understand. And when I had my when I had my gallbladder taken out uh, for three days, I couldn't I couldn't sleep because the it was a training hospital. Whoever did my surgery pulled my shoulder so far back that they pulled my shoulder out of joint, and I couldn't. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and I couldn't I couldn't. Uh, I could barely sit down. I couldn't lie down because it was so much pain. And they were trying to shove me into the, the wheelchair. I'm like, no, no, no. Let me walk. Let me walk. They're like, no, you have, I mean, I was trying to explain it to them. They're like, oh, you know, nah, you're, you know, you're just crying. I'm like, no, I'm not. Something's, something's wrong. Yeah. And they had, they pulled my shoulder out. Yeah, that just sounds like somebody was like lazy and moving you. It's like, you know, there's a proper technique in order to move people so you don't get hurt and the patient doesn't get hurt. But yeah, there in no way, shape or form should a patient's arm be dislocated during a, 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 a gallbladder removal. You know, I don't even, I have mine taken out. I don't remember anything of it, man. I don't remember the recovery. I don't remember the process. I remember like a couple of weeks beforehand when they were like, yeah, we need to take your gallbladder. And I was like, okay. I guess I was right. just sick. I don't remember anything from. I remember. It. I remember. You know them saying we're going to give you the anesthesia. I remember the white light, and then I was done. Um, did they give you the laparoscopic, or did they do the whole, the whole bit? Oh no! Did it was they like do the, like the three tiny cuts. Yeah, the three tiny cuts. Yeah. Yeah. Which is weird. It's weird that so many people here have. There's like a whole town where everybody had their gallbladder taken out. Like people around here do not have gallbladders. Especially, and, and, and another thing I found out was if you've had a, a child, your chances uh, with your next child, if you have another child, 
um, your chances for keeping your gallbladder are slim to none. Like, um, a lot of, yeah, a lot of moms yeah. have, get their gallbladder. Say, I wonder what the, the, the I have a theory. I have a theory. It's, uh, you notice how many more people in the South have had them taken out. It's probably the fried food in all honesty. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you it fried food was like the basic, right. you know, staple of my food pyramid growing up. If it wasn't fried, it wasn't cooked. <laughs> like fried food, uh, mashed potatoes and biscuits every meal. I don't know how I turned out. Like, you know, I was like, I wonder why I got so fat. Maybe it's because uh, that's all I eat is fried foods and carbs. Yep. <laughs> Taters and fried Snicker bars. That's all. Yeah, that's, that's what that's that's what got my that's, grandpa on my mom's side. Dude was hardcore, man. He would eat steak. He'd eat the fat on the steak. He smoked a pack a day. He was a heavy drinker, and he also died when he was like fifty. So, you know. You got to choose, you know, my dad, for a long life. <laughs> my dad just passed away last year, and he he was like two cases of uh, Pepsi bottles a day, those big glass Pepsi bottles. I'm like, dude, Jesus, what the hell? I mean, I think I'm bad. He was like, he'd like eat a whole bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's like, uh, damn. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing that goes to, I know a lot of people make fun of West Virginia because of our teeth, but that's another thing is like people can't drink the water. And for a while there, pop was a lot cheaper than bottled water. So people were drinking pop instead of drinking the tap water, which leads to your, your teeth rotting and falling out. So, you know, that's a, a, another reason why people you know don't have great teeth around here. I wonder uh, flor the fluoride content in, uh, in West Virginia water as opposed to, uh, other states yeah, I, I have to check on that but you know well that and even if you do drink the tap water the stuff that's in there will rot your teeth too so you know when when i was a kid i had my mom and i and my brother my dad had uh, well water and the second we it was illegal they they made it illegal to have well water the second they made it illegal the water all of a sudden the water turned brown we couldn't drink it anymore what? Um, yeah. Yeah. It was like I don't know what the hell. I, it was probably lead content because we were getting uh, we were getting the water from the James River at that point. Uh -huh. And if you if you read it, you know about the James River, it's the most polluted river, supposedly the most polluted river on the East Coast. So now I don't know. I, that can't be true because I would think the Hudson would be. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Like, Jesus, dude. But uh, at least the most um, the most uh, polluted in uh, Virginia, I know that. And the yeah. lead content is off the chain. I mean, that really should be one of the issues that unites, you know, most of America, because most of America is drinking some really toxic water. Uh, there's there's something going on with the water here. <coughs> Still trying to pinpoint it. I don't know if it's the rainwater or if it's or what it is, I'm still looking into it, but um, there is something here that's one of the chemicals, one of the many, many chemicals that's in our environment that is really making people really sick. We're having issues with people getting, their their spines are breaking down, it, a, lot of, a lot of bone problems, um, uh, and, and, they're, they're, and then they're, I don't know, I'll have to, I'll look more into it before I say anything else because I don't want to be an idiot on live stream, but um yeah they're what's some, stopping you i mean <laughs> <laughs> well it's never stopped me before but <laughs> i want to be a little bit more knowledgeable before i, I go after these people but yeah something hanky's going on and and it's making people very very sick i know i'm watching my niece and i'm watching see i've always been on the fringes i've always been it sounds kind of creepy but i've always been kind of a watcher i've never really participated too much but i've always paid attention to what everybody else is doing you know, the and, behaviors and of certain people. What is it? Is it the behaviors of other people? Yeah. Like yeah. An observing? Um, yeah. Watching behaviors, but I'm also seeing a lot of people are having a lot of the same health issues across the board. And I've got people that work in the hospital, you know, and, and they're telling me what the kind of patients that are rolling through. And I'm like, something's up. You know, something is up because 
there's just too many people having too many of the same, you know, health problems. And I'm like, there's something that is making us very sick. I mean, of course, we've had, always had a problem with the chemicals and stuff, but there's something new within the past few years that is not only is killing our environment, but it's killing us. And, and I'm watching it happen, and, and but it's so slow, and it's so many of these like little like things that just um, you wouldn't really notice it. Maybe it's like some back pain or whatever, but when you add it all up, it's a huge problem across the board for everybody. So have you seen like out of the ordinary stuff? I mean, obviously you'll have a lot of liver problems because of people drinking, but you know, like uh, just out of control, just unexplainable tumors and yes. cysts and all sorts of weird shit. You know, yeah. the feet problems, circulatory problems. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and people are getting, not only is it, it's not just a matter of like, people are getting, you know, are having back problems, but they're getting a herniated disc in exactly the same, you know, locations. You know, and, and these are people that were normally healthy active you know uh, you know i live in a place where you know there's a lot of people that are um like good christian you know church goers that don't like to drink they don't do drugs so it's like you know i'm watching you know somebody that's supposed to be in perfect health that is you know their health is deteriorating they're getting cancer they're getting you know all, all these back problems circulatory problems nerve a lot of nerve problems pain stuff like that um and then there's the issue with the water i'm watching a lot of people, their their pipes are it's it's a corrosive it's, it's something corrosive um, because it's corroding our pipes. I've seen a lot of people whose pipes, you know, even like new pipes, they're being corroded. Um, uh, our our trees are rotting; they're like just rotting from the inside out. Uh, and whatever it is, it's it's hurting us all. I mean, I'm looking at it, I'm like, if this is what it's doing to the trees, imagine what it's doing to us. You know, if it's killing the trees on this on this level. Or I'm seeing like forests just devastated. What is it doing to the people? I mean, we're not so different from a tree that we're not going to get sick if a tree is getting sick and dying. That we're we're not going to get some kind of effect from it. So, yeah. Uh, and, and I've talked to Karen Sheets, and she's seen the same problem in her area too, which she's just right up the road from me. She's about I don't know, like a three-hour drive. So. You know, she's seen the same thing with the trees and the people and, you know, it, it's a sickness. And I think Jenny Lynn's from that area, too. And she's been having the same problem. Jaw, teeth. Uh, I don't know. It seems like a lot of weird, um, a lot of weird, you know, uh, minor health problems. But when you add it up, it's the same problems with a, a lot of people. So um, a, lot, a lot of uh, times I've, I've seen uh, medications and opioids have have issues or people having issues with that uh my lithium you know it i was told not to go overboard with the lithium because it will uh you know it will damage your teeth um i don't know about the, I, if it damages the teeth, teeth teeth or bones so probably has deteriorated uh my body I, I have uh degenerated discs in my back so you know, um, maybe the medications that people are taking too. But and yep. what, what you can do too is see how many people have moved outside of your area, and if those health problems have improved or continued once they moved out of the area. Yeah, it's so hard with that because most of the yeah. people that are here just they just like, stay. I mean, usually if you leave, you're young. You right. know, it's not. So, you know, they, it's, it's usually a lot of times before, you know, they'll really suffer any kind of consequences. So, you know, I, I don't see too many new people even moving in to see how their health changes from living in an area that's better to move in here. Snork, what, what is the biggest uh, corrosive when it comes to pipes? Because I tried, I tried to put a new drain and my t it continues to corrode. I, th I think it's iron, but I'm not sure. What, what, what is the biggest uh, corrosive in water that, that would do that? Well, your, your issues are going to be uh, more how acidic the water is. That's the first part. Okay. And then, you know, what, what's in it? Um, some things tend to crust up and physically damage the pipe. 
Okay. Like you'll have a calcium carbonate, a white. Do you, do you have a white powder? If you no, it's, it's um, it's brown rust. Okay, brown well that rust. probably is a high iron content. Uh -huh. um, Excuse me, but, the chat room is asking for the link again. Can you give them the oh, link? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm I'm totally sorry about that. I, I put, totally I put it in Discord. I did put it in Discord. Let me see if I have the link still copied. Yeah, I think I do. There you go. Yeah, mine's like a bright green, and uh, and I've noticed this. I've gone to a couple people's houses that are having the same problem. It's a very bright green. It almost looks like, um, and I had a quarter. I don't see my my bathroom sink is broke, so I don't use it. But there's still all this like bright green. It looks like um, like a statue, you know, like the like the like the Statue of Liberty. It's like an oxidized. I think that's the word for it. You, you, uh, I'm it. not science, so you're the science person, but that's what it real close. Like. called oxidation levels. So, yeah. So um, different as different electrons are making bonds in, in the chemistry, they present as different colors. So there are there are compounds with iron where the water would look red. There's other ones where it looks green. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the same thing with, with copper, it's going to change, uh, which how it appears as, as it's going. But if your pipes are corroding, it's an overall bad issue. And, and, and usually it's expensive to treat regardless because the water softener has to have different things added to it to be able to take out different things. And that's probably what you need to do first is, is use a water softener, which leaves other chemicals it's basically just an exchange. Which do you want to be poisoned by? <laughs> right. Oh, so, my gosh. Uh, I, I have a water softener here, and water's still disgusting. So I'm, I'm adding a uh, five-stage RO unit to it where it comes out like bottled water. But, but, but here. Yeah. I don't know. I've gotten to the point where I almost want to take it a shower with 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 bottled water if i could afford it but you know it's like what am i even left with i mean do i use like the toxic water that's coming out of the faucet or do i or do i go broke or do i eat or do i have water you know like those are the the options that people are left with here like there's just it's insane and i'm watching people get sick and stuff and i'm like it, it it's either that or it has to do with with the environment or or the air content or something because i'm watching way too many young healthy people get sick get cancer get tumors get all these things even our children are are uh you know the autism rate um i'm watching uh behavioral problems i've been talking to the schools and and the the people that go around and they do like the speech therapies and stuff you know different type of things like that it's like they're saying like these kids they just can't function in school anymore. They're having trouble with attention, which could be a, a whole host of things, to be honest. I mean, like it could be TV, that could be the poverty, that could be anything, but it's just, I'm seeing sickness on a physical, a mental, emotional level, just wide, just wide scale all across America. It's like, we're so sick. We're so sick. And it's not even about the water anymore. It's not even about all this stuff. I mean, we're just sick inside and out, sick from just, the, the media sick from from the water sick from the air and it's just and how can you get better when you're ill like how do you go and you fight this stuff when you're so sick and you and you're so broke like man it, it's rough it's rough and that's why i don't i don't judge people like when they vote against their most best interest it's like well you're holding down two jobs you're you're, you're making seven dollars an hour you know i can see where where you went wrong with that so fuck you dave Kohler, for saying that well, your the shower comment. The uh, skin actually absorbs more lead than your than when you drink it. Really? Yeah, your your skin is like this huge spongy membrane <laughs> that and, and uh, really it's so bad that uh, I've suggested before that there should be a, a national program to put what's called whole house whole house RO in every house so that uh, uh, regardless of what the quality of your pipes are in town that uh, the children can can shower mm -hmm. you know 
that they don't have lead put on their clothes from when they wash their clothes where it gets absorbed in through the skin. And uh, uh, these units, uh, I can't afford whole house one. They're, they're like six or seven hundred dollars. And a one that's just put under the sink for drinking water is $119, and I can afford that. <laughs> and then it's like everything I cook with is going to be the equivalent of bottled water. Oh, gosh, I'd give an arm and leg just for that, man. Like, it, gosh, I mean, it's just so bad. Like, every time I, I make, you know, if I make Kool-Aid or if I, you know, make dinner and I put a little bit of water in, I'm like, am I hurting my child more than I'm helping him? Or, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I worry about that stuff all the time because I, I see the reports. I know what's in my water. But what option do I have? I mean, yes, I, water well, be, I don't know if the creek water be any better. <laughs> boiling does not remove the these harmful materials. It concentrates them. <laughs> so it just makes it worse. And a lot of people think boil water takes care of everything, and, and it doesn't. No, it really um, yeah. I've been using a murky filter for more than a decade just to make myself feel better. They've got three different kinds. I use the black Berkeys. Uh, the Berkey is the one that you pump it up, right? Uh, it's a gravity. It's driven by gravity. It has black filters, two or four, or big ones have six. And yeah. it just filters through it. And um, I it, believe you're talking about one of those things you can pick up at Home Depot. It's like a 10-gallon uh, container, 5 or 10 gallons, something like that. You fill it up, and it's got a spigot at the bottom. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's got a, yeah, it's like a two-piece, a piece of the top. You put the filters in a little bit. metally. And down at the bottom, it has a filter, I mean, a, uh, or, a, or a spigot, yeah. So it, it's some company in England invented it like 100 years ago. Yeah, it's a way of making filters, and it's just basically really fine filters. It gets rid of a lot of stuff, but it doesn't get rid of everything. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they'll compare yeah. to reverse osmosis. Yeah, they. Uh, I don't recommend the Brita at all. The Berkey's different. Uh, Berkey, I think, is ceramic, and there's still fine holes. They have the the black ones, which I use, and the white ones. Are probably the ones you're thinking of, the, the uh, ceramic ones. They're white and they do something else. And you're supposed to test your water and then get the one, you take the metals out if you have metals. Or yeah. if you have, just, have such large, bacteria, you can do something else. Yeah. Um, Stevie's going to be an that. area that has a lot of what's called norm, naturally occurring radioactive materials. And of everything, that's what I'm most concerned of. Where if you're in New York, I'm more concerned that you're drinking water that's been recovered from somebody else's toilet. Uh, and uh, where that's going, uh, well, actually, um, uh, there are other problems that, that, that West Virginia would have with water. But for, for like in New York, um, nothing with a hole bigger than uh, a half a micron would be okay for filtering the water. And gravity doesn't let water flow through a half a micron. See, this is why we need people like you, Snork, because like I, I'm, I'm trying to learn about this stuff, but it's, it's so, I mean, there's so much science to it and there's so much like, you know, chemistry and, and things like that. It's like, you know, it's hard to understand it. And, and you know what is a problem here, and what kind of, what kind of solution that we have here is, like you said, completely different than what New York needs. And it's just, uh, you know, for somebody that's you know for somebody that isn't this isn't their you know everyday thing that they have, they have family and they have work and all this. It's like, how do we get to for them to understand it and for them a solution for them? Because it's like I understand like time is a precious resource that those people just don't have. Yeah, after the Milwaukee disaster, they were trying to do everything they could to not have the public know about it. <laughs> just trying to quiet that down and have the rest of the country not know about it at all. So it wouldn't be like a, this was way before Michigan, but they didn't want something like that to come out. And, you know, they were quickly in the background. Uh, you just could not get the proper water filtration equipment. It was just all getting bought up. And because, uh, <clears throat> you know, people didn't want to sell pickles using Milwaukee water. 
his, you know, they were so afraid that, oh, Jesus says made in Milwaukee. It's got that, that water that, that killed all those people in Milwaukee. And I still think it's the reason we, we'd had people surrounding the Waco for, for a long time. Uh, with, that had been going on for, for, for months and, and weeks. Uh, and as soon as the people started dying in Milwaukee, they fired on, on Waco. <laughs> you know, started that conflagration and nothing but, but Waco was on the news for, for weeks. And nobody was talking about, you know, uh, 104 died drinking tap water in Milwaukee at the same time that uh, the uh, uh, event was going on in Waco, Texas in, in 1993. Uh, oh, my and, God. Uh, 500,000 people were hospitalized. Wow. I didn't even know about that. Yes. Just... Yes. Uh, I've often felt that it was like... <laughs> Uh, they, they they pulled a, a Lindsay Lohan on it. And if the news gets too bad, make sure there's something else that people want to see in the news. <laughs> Destruction quick. <laughs> yeah, you know what happened when we had our MCA gym spill here? You know what they covered on the national news? A panda. They covered a damn panda instead of talking about how 300,000 people are now with, are poisoned and without water. Yeah. Let's talk about the damn panda. That's well, they can't talk about that. Otherwise, they might have to accept liability. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, you know, when the uh, uh, the WPP plant, the uh, uh, the experimental storage of uh, uh, plutonium uh, in New Mexico, when that fire plant caught fire, uh, you know, they needed to evacuate Houston, uh, all Texas, all the way to Houston, <clears throat> and you know, nothing was popping up in the news at all. Uh, they didn't know how bad it was or or anything. All they knew that was all of this plutonium that was too bad to do anything with uh, got, uh, they were told to store it in kitty litter. But the people that uh, um, came up with the idea of storing it in kitty no litter. practical or safe. Yeah, we're, we're, they were thinking uh, put it in mineral kitty litter, the, the, the clay. Whereas the, the people who who got to buy the kitty litter thought, oh, well, the, the organic kitty litter is cheaper. And they put in kitty litter that catches fire when it gets hot. So this oh, plutonium that's... is going to produce uh, temperatures of over 500 degrees for hundreds of years. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I just let that sit and not use it as a power source. Well... <clears throat> Oh, I don't know. Stevie, do you mind if we answer that? or uh, oh. I didn't want to get too far off track. I understand yeah. the stupidity the of the time safety about it, but why just, I mean, it's you said plutonium, right? Yeah, plutonium and other transuranics that are difficult to characterize and uh, difficult to control. So uh, after a point, uh, nuclear fuel doesn't, isn't modelable and you can't tell how well you're going to be able to control it. So they have to swap it out with fresh stuff. Uh -huh. That's it. It, th it doesn't take very long for what's in there to no longer be plutonium. And I, I don't know what that cutoff rate is. Like with, with steam. Well, you, you said 500 this... years. No, but I, I don't know how long they could actually use in the reactor. I think it's six months. Well, I'm just saying 500 years and what would you say, 500 Fahrenheit or 500 Celsius? 500 Fahrenheit. But uh, uh, I don't. It's a bully. You can pull power off of that. You could heat a lot of houses if you did stored it up north, yeah. Well, I guess the term energy would be better because power people always think electricity right off the bat. Power people just think anything. Think energy. Yeah, power people consider steam dead at 530 degrees. Oh. Well, I know for the, a lot of the power plants, they run at like 375 PSI at like, or what? No, it was 375 degrees at something, uh, just kind of like a uh, right below the point of where it'd be a super critical steam plant. Mm hmm. Yeah, so the they they discard water at a temperature higher than 
than that that would make other water boil. Well, that's the whole, I mean, you salt. That way you could have a heat reservoir and then pull off the heat adequately as you need to make your turbine run. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a steam turbine. Mm -hmm. Well, for them, obviously, they figured that it's cheaper just to get another batch. And there was other usage to sell some of some of the other uh, uh, radionuclides that were byproducts. What was the original thing with the clay, though? Uh, it was supposed to be stored in a clay uh, that was non-flammable, and they picked a flammable clay. What? I'm, they just figured like hundreds of tons of mass good enough for shielding and everything and if it can I, I, handle the heat you're all good i wasn't in on the, the selection of the why <laughs> it just but doesn't the, uh, seem it, it didn't seem like it was planned out very well or they didn't put a lot of thought into it well the previous method that was thought to be used was called vitrification in vitrification where they basically turn it into glass yeah and they shrink yeah. it yeah, yeah get it real dilute in the glass and space out but they, they found that basically pretty soon it starts uh, um, uh, it starts uh, cracking the glass and the glasses course work is eventually over time to become sand and dust so it didn't provide the um, long-term safe storage that they, they sought so the idea of the kitty litter was something they could separate out easier uh, in the long term, I believe. So they thought they'd come back later and reprocess it when they knew how. But I, I, I don't know everything about it. Just that uh, the fire got so bad that it made the roof collapse. Oh, there. Somebody in chat knows about the Milwaukee uh, cryptosporidium outbreak. Oh, it was cryptosporidium. Yeah. Oh, see, I've been looking more into that because I've been looking into all these different, you know, water, you know, illnesses and stuff like that. And that was one that w that kept popping up quite frequently. Yeah, it's uh, an oocyte. It's the eggs that are such the problem. Isn't it primarily from mice or rat poop? <laughs> the original term for it was beaver fever. <laughs> Well, see, that might be something because, I mean, uh, does it have a cell membrane? Oh, I can't remember if it's... Uh, you Whatever it is, it does not there. have a cell membrane. <laughs> I've, I've, I've already ruled that out because the way that it, it behaves and the, and the way that it, it, it interacts with people and with, and with stuff, it's, it, it does not have a cell membrane. So, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that might be it. I have to look into that because there's... I mean, it's hard to tell. I mean, it, with these kind of things, it's like... Is it the poverty thing? Because, you know, some people can't, you know, a lot of people can't update their, you know, uh, you know, pipes and stuff. It's a lot of, you know, duct tape, redneck engineering. Is it something that's leaking in from the outside or is this, you know. Could it you know, possibly be, you know, maybe decades and generations of uranium exposure in the air? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to pinpoint it when there's so much that's poisoning us, basically. His TV? Yeah. Can you take me out of time out? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? Jess. I don't know how. To, oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know was, about this stuff. I don't know. It was a glitch. It was a glitch. So, oh, okay. yeah. I was so, like, it oh, wasn't me. I have a waiting yeah. room. I don't know how to do this. Okay. My, my, <laughs> phone, my phone is off. My phone is completely off, so it wasn't me. Supposedly it was Jeremy. Oh, actually, my phone isn't off, but I'm not on that thing. Is, is, everybody, <laughs> is, is everybody on? They can talk. Is supposedly Jeremy did it by mistake or something? I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm not good at multitasking, so I'm trying to like participate in the chat and then uh, look at the chat room too. So I'm just kind of bouncing back and forth. I'm not on with my my normal <laughs> okay now i'm chatting away <laughs> my jorah mormont that lynn gave me for uh, christmas 
He doesn't have great skill at all. I love Jorah, but he's in no way is he ever going to get with Danny. It ain't going to happen. No, no way. You put in so much time, and it just ain't going to happen. Do you think I wanted it to happen, but it's just not going to happen. Do you think he's going to be the betrayer again? Oh, I don't know. If she loses her mind and starts doing some stupid stuff, I can see him doing it, but he's so dedicated to her. I think I actually think it's going to be Tyrion. Or, um, no, it's going to be, uh, what's his name? John. But no, the merman guy, uh, the, the eunuch. What the hell's his name? Oh, um, the spider. What's his spider? Yeah, Varys. It's going to be Varys. Yeah. I can see that or John because John's just so. It's not going to be John. It's not going to be John. I, I, I already know it. Could be mm -hmm. Just because of the story. They are, they are merged as one. They are fire and ice. So that's not going to happen. Yeah, come on. That's his aunt. I mean, am I not? Spoiler, sorry, anybody. Is that not his aunt? Aren't they? I mean, but not, yeah. that, not that that's ever stopped any Game of Thrones characters from doing it. But, <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. That's your I love Game of Thrones. <laughs> I haven't been able to afford to watch it yet. Neither can I, but that's not stopped me. <laughs> uh. I did that free subscription to HBO for like 30 days or something, and then I canceled it after binge watching it. I can see Cersei doing it with a White Walker. I mean, it's just like they, they I mean, those guys are so, so just unabashedly. I mean, White Walker, sure. As long as they got power, she'll do it. Just like, Hitler. yeah, why not? <laughs> and then, and then. Uh... Yeah. Oh no! I said I said Eric's trigger word. <laughs> uh, there was something on Game of Thrones. Uh, it's the Walk of Atonement. It does really remind me of Hillary Clinton of how you know oh, she should God. she should get one and she, someone should shout the word cunt. <laughs> no chat is a chat without the words Hillary Clinton and cunt said in the same sentence by Eric. By the, by the way, I just watched Wonder Woman, and how many freaking blonde Amazons could there possibly be in that thing? <laughs> I, if that was a message if if I never heard you know, I was like, come on already. There are no blonde Amazons. Hillary Clinton was an Amazon. No, she wasn't. Stop it. Hillary wishes she could be. No, she she was like uh uh, uh, she was like in that one episode of, uh, 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 Futurama, Amazon Woman in the Mood, uh, uh, where, you know, <laughs> it was like, you know, that, but without the pleasure, but it was more of the, uh, brutal eyes. When we were all, all talking about poverty and, and having to, you know, pay out money and everything. We just got our first um, power bill since it's been cold, and it was a thousand six hundred and fifty bucks. Oh my god! Oh my yeah. god! And that's you not. Yeah, and we don't have our heat on, but very little. And are you using electric heat? Yeah. Okay, there's your problem. But we don't we don't turn it on all day long. Day long. Oh my god, that hurts! Like that hurts! Like right here, just hearing that a thousand dollar electric bill, dude. I thought mine was bad. It was over two hundred dollars, and I was like, "Well, I guess I'm just not using heat this winter." I mean, I've only got, I got two electric cars that I use, and that's it. And and everything else I turn off, and I still mine. I've owned a lot. <laughs> What's the water with the heaters? With what? me, I bundle up. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just it. We well, we've got three kids in here. We got to keep it somewhat warm. We got to get the chill off at least. So we turn on the central heater for just a you know a little bit, get it warm, turn back off, and that's how we've done it. But this year, it just it's the how the it, it's some for some reason they're charging way more. 
this year. Wood stoves and solar electric powered heat pumps don't require, you know, bills attached to them afterwards. Yeah, but you got to have money to buy solar power. Yeah, it's still fucked on cheaper than paying out your bill every month. Well, uh, I, now I don't know how oh, much no. it is. They're putting you in a position to where you're screwed with a 30 day deadline. Mm-hmm. But it's back to what um, Stevie said, you know. I mean, if you, it's kind of like if you don't make a, you know, a certain amount yeah, of money. It's not like they'll help you out. The funny thing is, it's like, you know, how people get assistance on heating and all that stuff. It, it, it's like they're willing to chip out money to pay off a corporation to flip your shit back on, but they aren't willing to fix the problem. Exactly. That really yeah, pisses me off about all this fucking shit. It's just pointless bullshit mouth service that's just passed off as, oh, look, we're helping somebody, but not really. We're really kind of permanently enabling the system. Well, like around here, there that we have programs to help people with like energy assistance, and they'll if you have a shut off notice, they'll pay your bill and stuff. But the thing is, there's so <gasps> many people that are trying to get that um, that it's only they, they only take like the first you know few people. So you know if you're not one of the first ones, I would have to say okay, if if people are put up against the wall or whatever up front, I guess it kind of helps them to a degree. But in a long term situation. It, it really just puts them up shit creek without a paddle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've I've seen somewhere now I haven't looked into it or anything, but I've seen where the, you know this person was saying that uh, for what you would pay, uh, you know, your usual utility bill with you know for your electric, you can get a small loan from a bank and get um, uh, solar panels and stuff put in, and then within a few years you get that paid off, and then you don't have to worry about it ever again. You're still paying the same amount. But, you know, after a few years, you're not going to, you don't have to worry about it anymore. But the thing is, is like when you have people in poverty, you don't make enough to qualify for a loan in order to get that. So, you know. That's why I like wood stove, biodigester, and repurposing junk material. Because Mm -hmm. I can turn all three of them into something that will cut your costs, improve your situation, and avoid you needing the fucking money in the first place. Well, or substantially less. There are some things you can do in the meantime without a lot of money. <clears throat> now, these might sound and look horrible, but they work. Hey, I'm talking biodigester that's basically a septic right. tank. They don't have or any money to do any investment. Sewage to replace your power. Kevin, he was talking. <laughs> uh, you know, you can't really get too much worse than that. Okay. Listen, they've got very little cash to work with right now, and they need some heat. to, And they need a way... Get some heat and and not and not in, increase that thousand dollar bill a month. Urine? No, no, no. Oh. <clears throat> uh, big black garbage bags. Do you have any south facing windows? Good idea. Mm-hmm. Okay, put the garbage bags no. so that the the opening is down to the floor. And the bag. Tape, oh, tape the bag. Hot air window. roll. The bottom uh, and then tape it down the sides so it's it's you're going to tape down the top the sides and then only on the side of the bag that's up against the window do you tape to the window wait the can you comes out, can you can you explain that differently i'm sorry it's my fault i'm yeah, not I catching you reference for i can give you a visual reference to what he wants to make but oh, he's describing okay. if i could talk <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Let, let's, let's let Snork finish. Okay. <clears throat> we, we had a, uh, a house, and uh, um, one of my, my son's friends, uh, his parents moved away so that he could graduate at our high school. We had him move in with us. And <clears throat> with uh, my, my son's <clears throat> and their computers and his computer, we moved them all out to our front porch, which was glassed in, but had no heater. So my first thought was to go out and buy styrofoam and cover every bit of window that wasn't facing south. Well, actually, I did more than that. Every window that wasn't facing south, I covered with styrofoam. And then <clears throat> I didn't want people at first looking in to see the computers in there. So I put this black garbage bag over the window temporarily. <clears throat> and... 
the next day the sun came up and it just poof billowed out and this enormous amount of heat was generated by it to the point where <gasps> uh, just having the, the room with a crack open it was nice and pleasant in there even though it was 20 degrees below zero outside <laughs> just, just an idea just to put in perspective for people uh, it's about a thousand watts per square meter that's nine square foot so that's like roughly 3,400 BTUs per square meter. Another way to think of it is wow. a, a normal heat. And on normal, your sunlighting conditions and all that, and your direction that's facing at. A normal room and heater. way to do it is what now, Snork? Yeah, a normal room heater, by law, is limited to 1,500 watts. So uh, one garbage bag is two-thirds of, a, of, a, of your maximum uh, space heater. So uh, a few of those in the windows start to add up real fast. I can tell you that. Now we have it looks, west and east. Will it still work? Um, in the morning and evening on those windows. Now, you know, what, what, if there's sun on that bag, on that bag, it's going to start billowing out real fast. It's going to be like a hot air balloon, letting all of its extra hot air out in the room. <clears throat> and in the meantime, it provides this layer of insulation between your room air and the window. So you know, your room isn't feeling all the cold air anymore. And, and like, like I said, I went out and I bought uh, styrofoam insulation one inch thick and covered the insides of all my windows with that, except for the windows I was using to generate heat. Does it have to be the black ones? Because we got like it, clear it has ones. To be a dark black color. You want the blackest ones you can get. God, that's <laughs> ugly. Well, a they, flat they, black too. If it's yeah. glossy, that isn't as good. It, absor it absorbs the uh, it absorbs the heat. That's why. Yeah, if you're not careful, you can melt your plastic too. Oh, it's, it's not going to be. Whoa! And it's sunny. <laughs> bottle will blow up sometimes. Uh, yeah, the the bag opens up. You know how bad that would scare the fuck out of me if I'm sitting next to it. No, no, the the bag <laughs> is all the heat out the bottom. There is no explosions. No, no evaporations in the room. Nothing. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's it is uh, free, easy heat. I'm gonna try it in my room. Yeah, like I said, it'll only work while the sun is on that side of the window. And, it, it, and as soon as the window, as soon as the sun goes as soon away, as the sun goes away, it deflates, and it's still a little bit better than having gla uh, glass against air for your uh, your uh, heat flow. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, still it still traps some of that stuff and it insulates it. I mean, that's what I've got right now. Let me tell you, I've got this. This whole place is redneck engineered. Okay, it has been it's been duct taped and styrofoamed and black garbage packed <laughs> because my my it was so cold last winter. I mean, we were freezing to death in here. We got two electric heaters and one gas heater, and and it, it was just so cold. I could not. I could. I couldn't do it and the electric bill even for it being so cold it was through the roof so i started looking into ways and kevin was a huge help with this i mean i don't know how many hours he spent on the phone telling me like different ways to insulate my house so you know and and, and water was another way to do it um which i which i did last winter but this year i think i got it good enough with the the styrofoam and stuff but yeah i mean it, yeah it's not pretty it's not pretty but uh, you know how do you do it with water huh how do you do it with water with, oh, and anything about yeah. water. I used to have those uh, heating with water and heat transfer and heat storage. Well, I noticed that the the water helped um, mostly in the in the summer. Like it it kept it cooler. Mm. You know, it's a uh, thermal mass. Huh? It's a chunk of thermal mass. Yeah. I think, you know, it's just it holds quite a bit of energy. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, what is it, uh, in ton capacity or whatever, it's 12,000 BTUs to raise a one ton block of ice, one degree. So that just, you know, water, water stores a lot of thermal. It's got a lot of give and take for capacity to it. Yeah, and the basement was my lifesaver this or Christmas. 
this uh, past summer because where it was getting so hot, but my basement where it's underground, you know, of course it's a way cooler. So if I left my basement door open, letting all that cool air circulate. So it start getting, you know, it's just a lot of, a lot of small practical changes that you can make in your house. And, and it's not even something uh, like for the styrofoam and stuff. I just use the stuff that normally would have been trash and, and just repurposed it and, you know, made it to where I can insulate the house. Like with you know, some of this yeah. stuff is are really cheap. Hmm. Well, you can take uh, you can take uh, um, craft paper, make it uh, have a, a bunch of little uh, forgot the term for it. Re re make creases and make it. Uh, Somebody's like, uh, asking. Yeah, I see a sound coming from Kevin. It might be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on headphones. There we go. That was fly. Well, anyway, uh, sure you, you call it when you have pleats, pleats, little wrinkles. So you have lots of little pleats in in craft paper or, or or um, car, um, I can't remember the name of the paper. The kids use it. That's multiple colors. You get the the really blackest you can get, and you can you can tape those little wrinkles up into your windows with the wrinkles up and down. Construction and paper, you mean? Construction paper, yes, and, and that's also really good for turning uh, sunlight into heat. Oh, I could make something pretty that way. Well, the, the more, I remember that construction paper. Well, you, you can always have some of it be pretty. The, the more that isn't black, the you, least you, heat you produce. Well, also you got to take into account how fast can the heat transfer. That way you can grab it when the sun's there, and that that's one thing because sometimes the collector will take a little longer than you want to warm up you know to get up to the temperature you want to where i mean because you want to push at least reasonable temperature into your house at least 20 or 30 degrees above whatever the room temperature is and i, I don't know i built one out of aluminum cans worked fine it went up to 210 degrees you know and that was only six square foot so works kind of brian saying that to put the white paper on it when during the summer make it kind of reflective or, or uh, depends on how much you can afford. You got time to plan for the summer, but you have these heating bills right now. No, if you yeah. got a thousand dollars bill per day. How many dollars? I mean, thousand per month is how many per day? So you're 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 blowing money every day in, in huge wads. Oh, and I tried to. Um, oh, someone right. asked me how long it turn took. on Cardin. We get um, charged every two months. Okay. Sorry, I should have muted. <laughs> and I'm in time out again. Oh, right. Well, are you are you being a trouble stirrer? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it says I'm being in uh, time out by the owner. Oh, I don't know how. I need to time you out. I don't know what's going on with that. Oh wait, no, or by a moderator. Nah, I don't time people out unless they're just trying yeah, to. Yeah, whoever's to, doing that, I'm not going to. Um, conversation, like if they're spamming with a bunch of stuff or just being blatantly stupid. Yeah, I don't I don't time people out. Yeah, whoever's nice. doing that, don't. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, yeah. Okay. For, now for I got summer, a better idea what to do. For summer, I use this. Um, I. My my previous place was uh, oh, it would it would be so unbearable that with two air conditioners we couldn't keep up. Oh, that so, stuff's fantastic! Is that the the that reflective that color in the window? Yeah, no, no, this isn't made for window. This is this is a, actually a higher or a is, higher level of reflection than that. Oh, but wow. one roll like this is like twenty bucks. <clears throat> you. If she's if she's having to air condition that same place at, at that kind of electric rate you know 25 feet of this four feet wide this could do a lot of windows mm -hmm. and, and well, yeah, uh, I think in the summer the the heat's more beating on your roof and depending on what type of roof you have it can't shed that heat too fast especially surprised if it's how much is coming one. from your windows the heat's coming in from your windows 
the, the light's coming in and it's getting converted. We did this on all sides of our house. And uh, we were able to get it down to a livable temperature in there. But we didn't, you don't put the f that film on the inside of the window. You it goes on the put outside. it on the outside of the window. So the heat gets reflected even glass. comes through the glass. Oh, I never even thought about that. I put mine on the inside. <laughs> right. So infrared doesn't like to go through glass. It likes to heat the glass and, and to heat your room. So we put it on the wow. outside. Never let the heat get in. Smart. Of course, it makes our house look like we're a bunch of drug dealers. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's so good. Oh I, was, I was just thinking that. I was like, the only time I've ever seen foil or anything like that covering a window, usually there's a good chance you could score some drugs there. So. <laughs> yeah. Top that out by the fact that I had a hydroponic farm at our place that was outdoors, 10 feet tall, 10 feet long. <laughs> I think you might have a Walter White streak in you. So, uh, you know, uh, I saw the police come by and just gasp when they saw my hydroponic unit. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I, and, and, you know, after just a little bit, cause I, I started growing my, my plants before I even put the hydroponics up and then just transferred them out and transplanted them. So pink, all of a sudden they had things. Once they got close and realized it wasn't pot. They were confused, <clears throat> but I had the mailman come up and say, hey, can I grow pot with that? <laughs> <laughs> and I started getting all kinds of neighbors going, wow, you grow your stuff right out in front of everybody. <laughs> and I, I, had, I had 10 feet up in the air, and I had two gardens that were 10 feet by 10 feet in the ground, so comparing the two. You know the uh, growing vertical versus growing the uh, the others, but uh, so um, the, the the hydroponic plants as well were outside where they shaded part of the house. On the other side of the house, we had a, a tree for part of it. But you you could a little bit of sunlight comes in through the glass, and it just heats it so bad. In my in my the, <clears throat> my wife got turned down from. 33 different facilities in Illinois as being too severe for them to be able to handle. The only place we could find was this really horrible town. <laughs> it took her and it would take me an hour to drive there every day, uh, twice a day. I'd have to drive, drive out to her. Uh, a lot of times I just ended up staying out there once, once I could, but pick her up. It took, it took like a half hour for me to load the minivan with her because she was paralyzed. And then I'd have to take her in for her morning treatment. And then we'd go home, uh, feed her, and then uh, take her out for her afternoon treatment. And then take her home. It was usually a, a full day full day of work every day uh, just just to, to go through everything. And so we actually moved to that town <laughs> just, just to save me all of the trips back and forth. And it, it saved half of our mileage by moving to that town. Only place we could find was this really horrible trailer. I mean, really, really horrible trailer. Where as soon as somebody moves out, the first thing that happens that night is somebody goes in and steals the electric outlets. Oh Lord! The um, uh, any the kind of stealing. Line, the, uh, gas. Gas. They're stealing. Yeah. They steal the pipes. They steal the water heater. They steal your house heater. Everything is gone the first night that somebody moves out. Oh yeah, they'll strip that. I, I don't know how many times uh, there was a, a girl I knew that that she bought a trailer, and every time she tried to move in, somebody kept stripping the copper and stuff out of it. You know, I don't even know. My mom's trying to sell her house right now. I don't know how it's got anything in it. It's still running because all around her is all these people that that's what they do for a living, and somehow she still has copper in in her house. So it's it's crazy. People will target the modular and the trailer homes just for the fact that they're poorly assembled and can be torn apart very easily and quickly. Yeah, we had somebody try to come in through our water heater door to try to break into the house while we were in it. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I went and I bought this uh, styrofoam foam that's uh, four feet wide and it's an accordion wrap. So it, it, it lays down together and they're all, all like this. And you can stretch it out, and it's, I think, like 40 feet when you stretch it out. 
and so you get this great big huge thing, and I cut that to fit my children's bedroom roof so that it wouldn't be radiating heat down on the kids <laughs> and that that worked real good we had to try everything to, in order to be able to to get that place livable and uh and uh it was actually i i found what i'm surprised Mark, you didn't was a just trade-off for, but for me it was a trade-off of okay i can do this or i can pay the heat bill or the cooling bill the electricity was always far worse than heating i mean uh the air conditioning was so far, far worse than heating so my thermal management was my main my main role in the house <laughs> was as soon as that sun was down i'd be start waiting until it was cold enough outside once it was cold enough outside the vents would just go open <laughs> and we'd let cold air in from the night to get the house as cool as possible until nine o'clock in the morning when vents would go closed and we try to you know keep the the temperature the, the same as as what it was and uh you know by 11 o'clock we'd be on air conditioners or if we didn't have air conditioners going by 11 o'clock we could not be in the house at 6 p.m <laughs> I would have, and you had a water heater, correct? Well, I, uh, I didn't. Well, when when I came in, uh, the water heater had been stolen. So instead of putting in a water heater, I put in this Murray tankless heater. Mm. Really little thing that sticks on the wall. Uh, we had a break in, and they didn't realize we had a water heater. They looked in, oh, it's empty. <laughs> but it's fantastic, is that? As, as long as you want to take a shower, you've got the same temperature water. Mm -hmm. And uh, except for you're putting all that thermal dissipation into your house, no, uh, or at least it, it, of it. it had its own little insulated room where that heat yeah. was shot out. I, I got an idea that could have also been tried. Well, I've done it before in similar setups, but basically, you can take a normal AC unit and you just have to get the or the uh, evaporating coiler or which I forget which one the outermost facing coiler gets hot that has a fan on it and then 55 gallon drum stick it in the top run a hundred foot of pecs through there hot and cold lines and you've got yourself AC that dumps heat into hot water and you can take a hot shower off of it yeah. whoa well we uh we also had the issue and of ice is, freezing is this, this was as long as you keep the water temperature 100 and below. Did you say with pipes freezing? Yeah, we had a problem with pipes freezing because we were in, in northern Illinois. Uh, and everybody, I mean, they're just tearing the house up every year, re replacing pipes and floors and whatever. And we did it once. <clears throat> and I just said, you know, I'm not crawling under the house again under this. And I rerouted all my pipes through the house. Put this Murray thing in. Uh, I rerouted so that we just had one one pipe just high enough to get in go through the water meter and then from the water meter right up into the floor right into the house and uh so i put a little bit of electric tape that has a heater on it just to heat up that that just a few feet that was between the floor and the and the and the, and the, and the ground and we never had our pipes freeze like all our neighbors did <laughs> We'd see the you know all, all of the paneling and, and whatever being torn out every year, but all, all the neighbors setting it out, and we never did. And they're like, "Why does yours freeze?" And I said, "Because I got these ugly pipes running in my house." <laughs> you know, we owned the place outright, so it didn't, it didn't matter. I've seen somebody and, the same sort of problems as set for instead of running the pipes through the house, what they did is they just uh, ran. You know the uh, the oh, the damn wire you stick on your roof to keep it from freezing on the edge. I forget the name of it, but yeah, they it's, basically it's took that tape. wire wrapped around all the pipes and then insulated it with uh, the regular cheap crappy insulation you get from Home Depot. It's cheap as crap, and then just the fiberglass insulation, the really cheap R13 rolls, wrapped the fucker in duct tape. It so basically turned a, a three quarter inch pipe into something the size of like a a six inch pipe, but it worked great. And you just, you know, never, basically the pipes are exposed to the outdoors. So, you know, yeah. from under the house, but we, we had it. So we only had to use the, the electric pipe tape only for just a few feet. So we were, uh, we were going for minimum cost possible. Well, that's yeah. what he was going for too, but he right. does so the insulation his heating costs, costs money. Water heating was his he house also heating. Have to be willing to go under the house. 
<laughs> yeah. And, you know what? Another thing people don't think about is having their sewage freeze. We had that problem. When oh. we, and I did not. We finally got our. I went underneath there with a with a hair dryer. I, I am very familiar with the underside of my. my well, your house. actual drainage line. Yeah, like she would send me underneath the house like every year. You know, it never failed. There was always a raccoon that would try to crawl up in their venting system, or something would freeze. I had to go underneath there with a with a hair dryer and stuff. And and one year it's like, okay, we got the water working. It's all good. We're good. Sewage was frozen. I was like, ah, so I had to go through the whole sewage line. And, it, and I found out about half an acre down from my mom's house, there was a, a piece of pipe that was exposed. It, it the all the rain, I guess, had washed away all the the earth from it. So you know, it was exposed. It was frozen. I was like, that that was our problem. So yeah, yeah, it it doesn't do you much good to have the water when your sewage is frozen. If you guys remember uh, when Sandy happened, right after Sandy there was a major uh, blizzard on Long Island and we had a lot of sewage icing. It, it was, it was a big, it was a big problem. Hey, um, uh, uh, Stevie, do me a favor. When Rebel goes back on, make her a moderator. Nobody's doing this. It's a, uh, it's a glitch in the system. Why would I be the one and why does it never happen in other chats? It actually did happen in other chats with Ditsy the other day. I wasn't, even, I wasn't even on. I wasn't even on, and Ditsy got bumped by me. Because I'm ready to leave. Because I just, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm. It's hard Rebel. for me to. Amanda, you sure, you're not sitting your keyboard or screwing no, 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 no. up. Jeremy no. isn't even on. Jeremy isn't on, and she's getting bounced. By what? It's, it's just driving me. I know. In the chat. Yeah, um, on, the, on the YouTube chat. It's a glitch in the system. I swear to you. I swear to you. Nobody yeah, there was like a glitch earlier that we couldn't share links. Like it was getting errors. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know how to do that because I was watching Holly's um, live stream and people could post links in there. And I'm like, how do you do that? Because people can't post links in live chat here. Yeah, that's true. That's one of your settings, Stevie. What, what you do ah, is you, uh, go, you go on. You go yeah, on there's the a pile of them. You go on chat, you check for Rebel's name. So Rebel, when you know, all you have to do is type a message. You hit Rebel's name, and you go add moderator. I can't type a message, baby, because I, I can't get it out. Once, well, once, I think you're timed out for three hundred seconds. So as soon yeah, as yeah, after after six minutes or three minutes, whatever the hell it is, three after three minutes. I know I had to off. figure out. I had to do my math. What's three hundred seconds? I know. I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't I, even yeah. trying to attempt that one. <laughs> it's Wouldn't only three boring. minutes only be 180 seconds? Yeah, whatever the hell. No, it's it's five minutes, actually. We're not math surgeons here, okay? Especially when my head is hurting. Jesus Christ. I'm, you know, I'm trying to take care of my migraine. Um, okay, sorry, guys. I just... No, I mean, I, I don't want you to... we got to figure it out, because if it's happening to you, it's going to happen, you know, later on. It's going to keep happening. And you can make Sorry, people out in chat. <laughs> I swear, Sorry. nobody's messing with you. Yeah. If they were, I would have yelled at them already. Thank so you, I, David, for so sticking I, up. No, I, I freaked out because supposedly I had timed out somebody a couple days ago, and people were like, Dave, Dave. I'm like, Jesus, I'm not even on. Somebody did that to me, and and one, I think it was in Debbie's live chat back when she was on YouTube. I, I was commenting somebody, and they were trying to reply back to me. And when they did, they accidentally right. uh, reported me, and, I, and they were like, "I'm so sorry." I'm like, "It happens, man." I don't know how many times I've accidentally done stuff like that. I was so upset with Stevie when she thumbed me down. I mean, geez, <laughs> really. There's too much shit in the world to worry about. You know, there's freezing sewage. Yeah, I think that's that. what, ha what, why I got mad right now. It's just I'm still fuming over. You know, part of my family didn't want me because I'm not Republican enough. The other part didn't want uh, me today because I'm not fucking Democratic enough. And I have a daughter that doesn't give a shit whether she's with me or not, and she left me. So all day long and all night long. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, I have not had one fucking person to do anything with, you know, and it's just, you know, 
So now I get here and <laughs> there's Amanda, like a hold, hold on, Amanda, here. Here, hold on. There. Uh, Bug. Moving the camera. <laughs> It's the first today. It's just been. It's just felt like God. Nobody wants me here, you know. And it's like, why? Why there am I go. here? Eh, you know, Christmas. Christmas is to me just. For me, it's a shit holiday because I'm basically an atheist, and my wife's an atheist. So it's like, you know, and we have no kids. So it's like, here's your present. Here's your present. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, uh. I don't know, man. I've tried to veer from the the Christmas conversation, but I'm a Grinch, and I'm proud of my Grinchness. You know, it's like give me a reason to celebrate. You know, I don't. I, there's there's good. I don't want to rain on anybody's parade. You know, if you love Christmas, then then don't listen for the next few seconds. But uh, you know, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to dampen anybody's holiday spirit. But damn, it's just a shitty holiday. You know, let's just get, I want it more like Thanksgiving, you know, like let's just people get together and talk about what they're grateful for, eat a fuck ton of food and pass out, you know, like. And I meant it as a way to just say, you guys are it for me. You're my main event today. And so. Yeah, my mom was going through that. You know, she's got three kids, but, you know, Christmas Eve is when we do our stuff. And then Christmas Day, we usually go to our dad's houses or you know, wherever. So, you know, I didn't know it, but she spent today alone and I just felt so bad because I just now talked to her and she's like, yeah, I was alone all day. And I was like, oh, well, you just say something. Well, um, yeah, my mom, I can't even call her because she has speech aphasia. I had to text her and, you know, tell her I love her and all that. And I got to give her a link to the chat where I opened all the, the stuff and, you know, um, yeah, it's like the family guilt day. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. God, the guilt. Let me tell you, I've not bought a Christmas present since 2011, which is when I lost my job. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's just like, and then people buy you stuff, and then you feel like shit because you can't buy anybody else presents. So then it's like this whole guilt thing. And even if you can buy presents, it's like, are you buying enough? You know, where do they get me? All this. It's like, bye, 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 bye. And then, you know, by the time it's over with, it's like, you just want it to be over with. I mean, does anybody really get to enjoy Christmas? Because it seems like people are so worried about what they're buying that they don't even worry about, do I get to spend quality time with these people that I'm buying stuff for? You know, it's just capitalism. Just right. It's a, it's like a, it's like they're frenzied cluster fuck at the end of the year. Just like, yeah, let's get those profits in. Like, Oh God, it just makes me sick. Well, here's, here's my theory on, on the whole holiday thing. Thanksgiving, be thankful for everything you have. So now you're thankful. So now give it all to somebody else, but buy shit to make yourself feel better for all the guilt that you have for all the food that you ate on Thanksgiving and everything that you have. You're an ungrateful son of a bitch, so you have to buy shit to make yourself. It's fucking stupid. Oh, that's you know? a good point. Like, like Thanksgiving sets you up for that. Is yep. that Thanksgiving yeah, Thanksgiving sets oh, you up for being good. guilty. So you, yeah. That's and smart. then, and then, New Year's is I will I will spend uh, more wisely next year until Christmas. It's fucking stupid. But um, I it's just it's almost holidays are programming to me so uh it was just I, it was just weird this you know yesterday my daughter drops this small blanket on my bed i've got all the blankets in the world and she goes i know it's not much but i know you, you can't afford to get anything so here and then she drops it off and then says by the way i gotta go and she picks up the luggage and leaves <laughs> It's like, what the fuck was all that meaning? <laughs> oh, crap. I'm going to have to go. James, what the hell do you mean by, I mean, she is the love of my life. Why do you keep on doing that with the, with the quotation marks, by the way? Yes, I did get her stuff. He's annoying me. Hi, James. Yes, I got, I got my wife's stuff. Yes, I did. Ugh. 
All right. I'm going to have to call it night. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. So. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Night, guys. Love you guys. Guys, take care. Have a great day hey, now. Thanks for spending some Christmas time with me. I appreciate it. I Not know a problem. Really Merry Christmas, like, y'all. So make time to come here and talk to me. So yeah, that I'm sorry I blew it. Oh, you didn't, <laughs> what did you blow? You didn't blow nothing. Okay. You're cool. You're cool. It's just getting late. That's all. <laughs> all right. Love you guys. Love you too. Have a good night. People. Guys, take care. Right. Yeah, thanks for all the chat people for stopping by. So How do I get out of this? I might do another one tomorrow. Who knows? Okay. Love you. Turn out tonight. All right. Good night. All right. How, oh, shit. How do I do this? Uh, I do this every single time. I never know how to end the chat. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Yes. So we had we had a couple of people in here, just a few things right before I end. We had a couple of people in here that have their own channels, like uh, Independent Outsider. Um, I know Snort does some stuff sometimes. Fly, um, he does stuff with um, the Internet Party, and he because you know Susie Dawson does these you know giant live streams where she has all this information, and Fly will take it and he condenses it down and, and puts the little segments, you know, on his uh, channel, which is definitely worth checking out. Um, you know, uh, I think I said independent. Uh, Eric also does stuff on his channel. So those are all people worth checking out. And um, thanks for spending time with me and the conversation. And I'll see you next time. Night, y'all.